Uh, Nantucket TV, do you hear me? You are all set and ready to go. Okay, so we're rolling now. You are live. All right, thanks. Okay, folks, I'm, I'm going to read my script for the remotely conducted meeting. As a preliminary matter, this is Ray Pohl, chairman of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Men members, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Coombs. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, Diane Val Oliver. Here. Thank you, Carrie Thornwell. Here. Great, and this is the chair, Ray Pohl. I'm here. Uh, staff Abby and Pohl. Camp. Oh, I'm sorry, Abby. I didn't, I I didn't see you when you came on. Sometimes I wonder if you think I'm still part of the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I could have sworn I just looked through the whole thing there and didn't, didn't see you. I've been here you, for you just, hours. <laughs> you, you, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm being gaslighted right now. But anyway, so Abby Camp is with us too, folks. And uh, staff, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Kathy Flynn. Present. Thank you, Holly Backus. Present. Okay, and other people will uh, be named as they appear during the hearing. Um, good afternoon. This is in, this open meeting of the Nantucket. Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. This meeting, the Nantucket Historic District Commission is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by this recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the post agenda unless the chair knows otherwise. So we're now turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. And further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken at this meeting will be conducted via roll call. So that's it. And the first item on the agenda, as we all know, is for a motion to approve today's agenda. So move. Thank you, Diane. On that motion, Val Oliver. Aye. Abby Camp. Abigail. Oh, let's go to Carrie for the moment. Aye. Aye. It's Carrie, right? Okay. And Abby, are you on yet? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. I guess that was the yes. And I'm in favor of that. So we now have an approved agenda. So is there any public comment, uh, Kathy or Holly, that, that I should read? 
Sounds like maybe no. No, C, not anything. No, no, okay. sir. Okay, very good. Then we're going to move right along to the consent agenda, of which there are 21 items. Um, Carrie will be recusing from this, but we still have four members that can vote on it, so I could entertain a motion on that. Motion to approve. Consent Thank you. I Thank you, Diane. So Diane has made a motion to approve the consent agenda on that motion. Abby Camp? Not there. <laughs> Val. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Val, Val Oliver. Oliver. Uh, Abby, are you there yet? Mm -mm. No. Um, can somebody unmute her? Diane Coombs? Aye. Thank you. Chairs in favor. Let's just make sure that that uh, Abby is in favor too, even though she's we... not even sitting at the screen. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. The motion carries. Three in favor. Right. All right. So that was our consent agenda. Consent with conditions. We can all sit on this um, motion on that one, perhaps. Motion to approve. Thank consent you, Diane. With... Okay. Uh, on that. Oh, so, uh, Carrie, you need to um, recuse from this too because of your 26 pine crest. Okay, so. That actually, back. that actually is mislabeled. That was um, Lindsay Congleton, the pool. Yeah. Um, I had her cabana. This, this, um, this application is under my name for some reason, but um, it was actually. It, it, it could have been a copy and paste issue yeah, when I was making sure. it. It's my, it's, it's the same client, but yeah. it's fine. Okay. Well, well, let me just make sure. So are you doing work at 26 Pine Crest? I am. I was in, I was doing the cabana and Lindsay Congleton was doing the pool. Well, so if, if you're working on the property, it would be right to recuse then anyway. So yeah, I think yeah so. it's mislabeled, but, but still, I, yeah, um, you should yeah. recuse. Okay. So uh, let's see, Diane, you had made a motion to approve consent with conditions on that motion. Val Oliver. Aye. Abby Camp. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Aye. Thank you. I'm in favor. Motion carries. Now we're on to our new business carried over. Okay, first up is uh, uh, an application that Val Oliver is representing. So obviously she's gonna recuse. The board is Diane, Abby, Carrie, and myself. So. You ready? Ready. Okay. This is a uh, subdivision that was stalled for quite a few years and has now been reignited. Um, Workshop APD has been doing a lot of work out there. It's right before the Navy Coast Base. Guard area, Coast, Coast Guard, Guard Station yeah. housing. Um, and because the last few times we've reviewed, we have not reviewed my application, but we have reviewed this subdivision a few times with different things. I um, went and did a PowerPoint, which is at the end of, um, my application, so maybe we should do that first, um, to show context to everybody who hasn't been out there, because I think there was some confusion about what the context actually was. <clears throat> and most of the comments that were related to issues with this, I think are not. Okay, so I'm going to guess that the comments you're talking about are Sconset advisory comments? Well, no, not necessarily Sconset. Um, oh. It was our board, and I think there was some misconception about uh, the lots and things uh, on the lots. So uh -huh. I just wanted to clear it up and bring in stuff that is in the area, the immediate area, the abutting area. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. everybody has an idea of what's going on, and then launch into the application okay but this this is the first time this is being reviewed so right because it keep you know our agendas never seem to <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh, but but, close. but the circle so doesn't we, we, close. Haven't, we haven't taken any pot shots at this application, <laughs> no I guess no what I mean. all right so <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll review your contacts because i, I we do we have um sconset advisory on this 
you know, um, I don't seem to have twin this one in particular. Um, I swear I, I gave the comments before, but maybe not. This was always at the end, so I don't have it in front of me, and I apologize. Pretty bad. Well, um, not, see, here's what I'm not understanding. This is a new application. Right. So why mm -hmm. have you heard any comments on this before? When when would that have occurred? Anyway, so Val, uh, we'll, we'll look at your content. And we can look at your actual design, okay? I'm representing this for somebody. No, yep. I saw that, thank yep. you. So <clears throat> just as a little overview while you're scrolling through those, there was some concern that the lots the, the houses seemed like they were too large and going from lot line to lot line. But the context is um, really driven by the lots. And so I would say that's why I went through and got all the lot plans so everyone could see, you know, um, mm -hmm. that that's basically the case in, in all of these houses and uh, is not an anomaly to what we're presenting. <clears throat> I will say as well, our house is, um, let me see, I don't know if I can see that. Holly, can you blow that up a little? How far back from the road? Oh yeah, you, you gotta keep blowing it up more. I'd actually be interested in seeing some of these other dimensions too. Yeah, the side, um, side dimension. I have a magnifying glass on my. <laughs> so Holly, can we blow that up any more? Uh, lost it. There. It, um, okay, scroll down a little bit. I see 20 feet. I'm looking for the front yard setback. It's can quite we, big. Um, yeah, I know. Um, 100, what? 111? It looked like 111, but it's not there anymore. 87.8 feet. Wait. I think. Oh, no, you're right. Sorry. Forget it. 111 feet. 111 feet, six inches. Yeah. Okay. And now, uh, sorry, uh, Holly, but could you scroll back to where the house is so that I can see the sides, the side pieces? Um, 10 and 10, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, should we take a look at the elevations now? Sure. So uh, I think one thing I want to point out is that this is a modular house. So by virtue of that, you're always going to have probably an extra foot of height by the mm -hmm. way the construction method is. Mm -hmm. um, the overall height is 29, two and a half. Mm -hmm. The roof is wood. Uh, it's cottage corners. The trim on the windows is white, windows and doors, sorry. And the sash is white. Okay. It's a beautiful uh, shingle, example of a shingle style home, which a lot of the houses I showed prior in the area are a takeoff on that as well. And we have a roof walk. Right. What a surprise. And uh, well, we'll just leave it with that to see what everybody's thoughts are. The back of this backs up to, I believe, um, the Coast Guard slash um, some of its conservation, some of its Coast Guard. Maybe but there's a huge buffer of vegetation there. So if anybody got a, to go out and see it, we, our, our aim is to keep as much as we can. Okay. Um, maybe we could scroll back to the locust plan. Okay. So down just a little more. It's, it's on the left. <laughs> Up on and the on left, the left and up the top of the locust, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Up, up, up. Right there. Yep. 
So behind this is where like the old, uh, that radio tower used to be and everything. Yeah, and the housing and uh, part of it that bisects it, I believe is conservation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's see, board members, are you ready? Ready, ready, Hedy. Okay, go ahead, Diane. <clears throat> I appreciate the pictures of the surrounding houses. It gives us an idea. Uh, I have, I, everything on the second floor almost, except one window is mulled. I don't know if we could separate them a little bit there, I would like to see you have enough space to have some secondary uh, area. It's all one big rectangle with no breaking down. The, the sides uh, are two stories and the uh, roof walk makes it, what, 33 feet. Hey, Diane, I think what's a misconception and it's it's the rendering and I didn't notice it till you just said that, but on the main mass of this building, it's yeah. rendered as though that is sidewall. However, it is actually roof with dormers. Okay. So I can see why that is, um, why you're feeling that way, but... Um, it actually is um, a, a gambrel roof, so there is no sidewall where you see the two shed dormers. Yeah. Or, yeah. The two end pieces, yes. Okay. Well, that I think that the design is good. I, I you said it was a pre-built house. Yeah. I just wish that they, when they pre-built it, they don't build pre-build so many mold windows because it just the window I don't know what the next elevation is I can't see it below the front but you've got those three mold it's the left elevation so what the yeah. west elevation yeah uh, everything on the second floor or over there on the left hand side is uh mold and do we have the same thing that we had the other day as far as the roof ending in the the roof walk and not continuing the other side or is that no that doesn't happen well, it doesn't happen no okay it's it's got roof on both sides of it yeah when we saw like okay well I haven't been able to get to the other one yet. Anyway, that's the on the rear. Is the rear elevation is is it visible? I don't believe most of it will be visible, but probably some of the second floor roof. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think there's a plethora of windows or doors. I think. I'd like to see it broken down somewhat. Uh, and there's what, two, four, six, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen doors on that side. I think that's too much. That's all. Uh, that's all I'll say for now. Okay. Uh, have Thank more. You um, Carrie, you ready? Sure. Um, I agree with Diane. I think on the second floor, that four panel glass door maybe could be reduced to a two with some windows. Um, but understanding that it's backing up to, what is it backing up to? Conservation land or something? Yeah. Some, some of it's, it's conservation and some of it's Coast Guard. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, because the first floor, it won't be visible. But then on the front elevation, 
it's sort of trying so hard to be symmetrical, but then that one little slice on the left mm -hmm. is yeah. there to sort of break up the length of the ridge, but it's somehow, it's funny, just simply because this is so symmetrical, except for that little piece and a few windows. And then the front door, all that seems to be a little much with the glass panels and are those transoms above? Yeah. It's hard to see under the porch roof. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're all one over one? No, no. They, they aren't. <laughs> oh, I can see shadow. I can see shadow of lights. Are they? Yeah, they're six over six. Six of, oh, okay. I see some shadow of- Some are eight over eight, eight. yeah. Okay. Um, or eight over one, excuse me. Six over one and eight over one. Yeah, and then the center, when the three ganged units, those are a little narrow to be, what are those? Are those- I believe those are eight? doors. They're doors. I believe so. I don't think out so, there? Oh no, they're not. They're not. I take that back. They're windows. Yeah, they're they're eight light windows, casing yeah. windows. I kind of feel like they should be double hung as well. I understand okay. why, because they're the feature of the center. But uh, I don't know this the the center glazing in that first floor door and above it seems. Yeah. To me, I don't know. I think I. I'd rather see something a little more typical, traditional, double hung. Okay. That front door configuration. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of glass right there. Okay. Is that it, Carrie? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. How about you, Abby? Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what's been said. I think the front entry um, for a shingle style, I. I I think it needs a redesign. I I don't quite understand it. Stand it there. How that relates to a shingle style. I think the the for, the forward facing gambrel roof line looks like it's pasted on. Like it doesn't have any depth. It it's sort of I don't know. It just looks odd to me. Um, and I think the three windows over the front door need to be smaller but be a decorative shingle style manner something that you know you would you would see on a shingle style house um i think the height of this building is is a bit overwhelming um to be almost 30 feet high um i just i just it, it's it's got an enormous presence this house um and i think the height is contributing to that um, I don't know if you could scale it down on on the uh, additive massing or how you could do that. Um, a chimney would sort of be nice. Um, I agree with Diane. The re the rear is over ganged windows and doors. Um, I'd like to see that sort of uh, dealt with sort of a little more sensitively to the birds or whatever is going to see the back, the birds and the deer. Um, I, I don't mind the roof walks so much. I guess, I guess there are a lot of roof walks down there, but I just think that the, the old, the massing that has a lot of uh, large presence, this building. And I think a, a few tweaks here and there, it's gonna be fine. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. So, the other board members have touched on a lot of my concern with this, but I'm going to add a few things. So staying on the roof walk just for a second. Um, it's not rendered the way a traditional roof walk is rendered where the posts are continuous down. Mm -hmm. you no, know, the skirt board is interrupted by the post coming down. I also think that particularly on the rear and the front elevations, there should be a, a, an intermediate post in the middle. This okay. is a long run for just two posts at the either end. And is the skirt boarding going to be natural if we're having white trim here? Uh, specifically, I hadn't asked that, but I'm sure they'd be amenable to that. That would be great. Because uh, the roof is wood, so. 
Right. Well, I mean, if it went all natural, fine. But if they're looking for white, I would at least want those skirt boards to be uh, natural, no matter what. Uh, Agree about the rear elevation over over fenestrated. Um, And particularly, I agree with Carrie's observation about that little sort of in between piece that's just off the side. I mean, you can see it on the rear elevation. It was really apparent on the front. Um, so I think that that wing needs to be stepped down because um, it's just not, there's not enough differentiation between the ridge, the main ridge, which is admittedly tall and long, and then this so called secondary ridge. So that should come down. The fact that the dormer kind of whacks into the side of the main uh, building, I find awkward. And then these two outermost wings with the hip roofs on them have this funny thing that I generally find objectionable where the eave of those two outer wings is actually higher than the eaves of the dormers going around the main building. So it should be as low as or ideally lower than that. So we have this kind of stepping down Right now it's going in the wrong direction. So agree on the entry. Um, It'd be nice to get those muttons more clear on the drawings. And I think that everything else, all the other concerns that I have have been already voiced. So maybe we can have a motion on this from somebody. Motion to hold for revisions. Thank you, Abby. On that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. Thank you, Val. See, we got a few more coming up for you. Next up, 33 Coffin. Oops. Mr. Chair, I do have comments from Sconset Advisory Board. Uh, sure. Do you want to read those now? I can do that. Okay. Um, so the overall comments were to make the windows taller and larger. And then there was a, a comment on the west elevation. Um, that the porch looked smaller and it was actually better. So more, more concern on the windows. Thank you. So Sconset Advisory would like to see the windows get taller and wider. Is that what they said? Taller and, and just, I guess, taller and larger, not wider necessarily, but taller. They okay. seem to be smooshed. Right. Okay, so Chip, I see that you're on deck. Why don't you just tell us um, yeah. Oh, oh, we do have previous approval. I'm sorry. So yeah. if we could somehow manage we those together, maybe. Yeah, it would be nice to see them side by side so we can really um, focus on what changes have been made here. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Perfect. So Chip Webster here on behalf of the applicant. Um, most the fenestration changes, there were some little minor detail changes as we were working through the drawings. Uh, the primary changes are proposed uh, window revisions and this front uh, railing at the main entry uh, proposed to be changed. So the, if you look at the existing approval, we had two window types, an A window and a B window, where the A windows were the larger window and the B windows were wherever it happened to be over a counter. Um, we, the client felt, and I agreed that on the existing approval on the left uh, gable that was four, those four B windows, which are on the front of the house, just seemed a little uh, non, you know, didn't, didn't really jive with all the other A windows. It seemed a little out of place. So what we did was we actually made the B windows larger uh, than they were, and we kept the A windows the same size. Um, and we and then we changed a couple of the A's to B's. So, I, you know, quite honestly, we did we did you know, the in the proposal, uh, the B windows are larger, the A windows are the same size. So, um, mm. a little 
I'm, I'm a little unclear on the Sconso advisory recommendation of making them larger because that is what we are proposing, except for a couple locations where we're swapping out A's for B's. Um, so that is it on this elevation. Should we go to the next elevation? Please. So this is the west elevation. The primary change here is uh, actually removing some windows. And then if you look, there's a subtle difference on the west porch that Scottsdale Advisory had also pointed out. Where we're proposing removing two returns uh, that are on the existing approval. Uh, it simplifies the port, so it's just a simple uh, hip uh, wrapping that one middle gable element. And mm -hmm. you can see left and right on the existing approval where we're proposing to remove two little returns that just seemed unnecessary. Uh, mm -hmm. We can, we can, those, I mean, these are the two sides that are visible. We could continue to look at the other sides. Uh, Minor changes here. There is a French door that we're proposing changing to a single door with a pair of windows. Um, minor uh, uh, detail changes as we were working through the CDs. Nothing really of note there. Why don't we continue our round to the other elevation. So the north side here, uh, it's really just changing a few of the window sizes and removing that little porch return. If you look on the right side of the existing approval on the north elevation, you'll see this sort of hip, not really hip, it's sort of like this shed roof that cuts into that uh, wraparound porch that we're proposing to remove, which cleans, yeah, right there. So we're proposing to take that off so it cleans up that. And then the other, really just some minor changes, uh, shifting the outdoor shower. And then this is the side that is not real. This and the east side are not visible. This is not visible from anywhere. So it's really the south and west are the ones that we should be uh, looking at. The front is the south. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yep. Thanks, Chip. Okay, folks, we're all on this. Right. Okay. Just trying to check that. Here we go. I'll go, Mr. Chair. That'll be great. If you're ready. Yep. I actually think that the changes are um, positive, and he his windows in his new proposed version are actually bigger, less squatty, especially on the front than the prior. Um, I think the changes are appropriate. Thank you. Well, Abby. Um, yeah, I think that I think the cart has left the barn on this one. I, I'm 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 new on this, but I was I had I don't have the history that you all have with it. Um, but um, I'm thinking I, I think the only thing that's bothering me is that the main the um, that for that forward gable coming with the three new win window sizes is. Uh, sorry, the, the, to the left of the main massing seems still sort of overpowering, but I don't know how you calm that down. And I don't even know if it makes a difference because I think this house is set back from Coffin Street. I think it might have a circular drive or something. So it, I, I'm, I'm just wondering, I, it may not even matter. Um, so it, it um, is set back. Um... Well, yeah. the interesting thing, Abby, is is the gable that you're talking about was approved, and I don't believe that Chip is planning on changing the gable. He's planning on changing the windows inside. Right, right. The, I'm I'm referring to how to, you know, sort of calm that forward gable coming forward be, um, with the windows because, um, but I don't think it's it's really important because I think there are a lot of cedar trees in front of the house. Is that right, Chip? That is correct. It is set back. It, there is uh, vegetated and there's a circular drive. So you are remembering uh, the house correctly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know the house pretty well. I, um, yeah, I'm fine with the changes. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, Carrie. I think it's a really good looking house. Can, can you show the west elevation? There's only one thing on that west elevation. Those windows next to the top part of the chimney, the squares, 
Yeah. I I I want to see those bigger. They 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 look like owl eyes to me somehow. <laughs> um, if they could be bees, I think that would that would help. But other than that, this is a good-looking house. I don't really have a problem with Thank that. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Diane. I don't have a problem with most of the house. I don't think that we he should reduce the A windows to B windows. The windows to me in many locations seem too small for the size of the house. And I would like it's not a little bungalow with small windows. It's a big house and it should have comparable windows to go with the size of the house. Uh, they're getting smaller and smaller, particularly, uh, I guess it's on the south front. Those two windows in the little gable off to the right of the front door. You've got plenty of room, plenty of wall space to make them bigger. Uh, I, I would like to see the windows go back to where they were A's, go back to A's in other places made larger so that they fill up uh, the space and give the house some presence of individuality, not just a bunch of little windows all the way around. Thank you, Diane. Now, Chip. Chip. Yeah, I'm here. I was going to say that there was no case where the A's actually got smaller, but Diane is in fact pointed out one area where they have. They've gone from A's to B's on that gable to the right of the front door. Um, is there anywhere else in, around? Yes. Where, so, where so there are two locations and they both show on this elevation. One is the location that Diane pointed out, which is that gable to the right of the door. The other is uh, go to the left with the cursor a little bit, look under the porch. Oh, right. Yeah, the There's double the window way to the left. Way to the left, left. Way to the left. The other left. Yeah, there. <laughs> so that those windows that are under the porch and the two on that one gable are, are being proposed to go from the A to the new B type. Part is of the reason- there any, Is there any reason that those couldn't remain A's? I, I was just about to say, so part of the, uh, I guess the short answer is those could be A's, but part of the logic here was that the B's that are on that uh, left gable that are in the kitchen uh, can't be A's. So I thought- but they, but Hang on, Chip. We're only talking about where they've gone from no, no, no. a B window before to a B window now. There, or You already had four B windows, which have gotten bigger. Yeah, correct. That gable. So the the the, uh, the right hand gable, I just thought it looked better for the windows in the gable to match the ones in that main gable to the left. They could absolutely become A's. It is a bathroom, you know, so it's maybe not ideal, but they, that could be the case. So they're going to like. The idea here was that the A windows are in the main entry middle mass, and by making the B windows larger that we made that sort of the primary window type. That was the logic. Well, I get that, but I, so you have three windows that are B windows that have gotten larger. So I appreciate that on the yeah. left-hand side of the front door. But I, to Diane's point and also to Scott's advisory's point, if we were able to take the double that's on the far left and the two in the gable to the right of the front door and return those to A's, I actually think that, that the house would benefit from that. Yeah, I mean, that is doable. Okay. Um, oh, and Carrie, I just wanted to circle back on your comment because uh, although I think that the windows could get bigger, I'm actually appreciative of the fact that the windows have gone from being heart approved as horizontally formatted windows to more vertically formatted. Windows. So, you know, I think that's a net benefit for us. Um, so I, I'm not going to insist on those windows getting larger, even though I think it would be nice if they did. So those are my comments. Um, are we look for revisions or do you want to try and pass it through staff? Well, I think that we can oh. pass this through staff, honestly. 
if it sounds like Chip is willing to um, make the changes to the windows that, that Diane has identified, you know, the ones that have gotten smaller. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, I, I, although I like Carrie's suggestion about larger windows, I'm not sure that it's necessary because we already are looking at an improvement over what we had before. So Just it would be that the, that the windows in that forward dormer on the left become A's again? Uh, okay, so let's go back to the south elevation. So what I think is being proposed is that the, the ones on the far left side, first floor of the south elevation would go back to being a double A window and the gable to the right of the front door, the two B windows would go back to being A windows. A windows, okay, that's my motion. Oh, thanks. Okay, so there is a motion on the table. Um, on that motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Carrie? Aye. Thank you, Abby? Aye. All right, and I'm in favor, motion carries. There you go. All right, okay. thank you everyone. Thanks, moving right along, we got 26 New Street edition. Do we have somebody on to represent this? So it's BPC. Yeah. I don't see Joe. Uh, nobody. Or Doug? No. Oh no, he works for Mark. Never mind. No huh. Joe, huh? Oh. How uh, about motion to hold for representation? Thanks. Um, on on that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Sal. Aye. And I'm in favor. So now that we hold item three, and now we're back to you, Val, at 28 South Shore. Okay, so um, the next four applications go together, mm -hmm. sort of. Um, it's one parcel of property right now. Um, it's the two young men that own uh, Dreamline Modular. They're mm -hmm. moving down to the island to become part of our lovely fabric here. And they've chosen to build two houses, one for each of them and their families, and then they are doing two covenant homes. So we thank them for that. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And um, which one do we have first here? Uh, lot 1B, it says. 1B, okay. So uh, some things to keep in mind. Hopefully everybody got to go out and do some sort of a view out here on South Shore Road. This is right butted up to um, Augie's junkyard with the chain link fence and all the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, stuff that's there. Yep. Um, South Shore Road is the actual address. However, these lots will be accessed from uh, blueberry. So mm -hmm. it is their intent to keep as much vegetation as possible on South Shore to not change that view, really. Um, so let's, and I do have some. Hey, Val, you yeah. know what? I, I erred when I said it was lot 1B. I'm looking at this now. The, the title block says lot 1B, okay? But it's really lot 2A. Yeah, that's probably yours truly putting the wrong address on there. So, so go with clearly, we're looking at the lot that's shaded in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so it's not the corner lot. It's the it's the lot that's one in. Correct. Shore Road. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. good. Sorry. 
No problem. That's me. Okay, so why don't we look at the, there we go. Okay. Uh, you want to give us uh, like height? Yep. Like so again, obviously they're a modular company. So, you know, with virtue of the modular construction, there's always going to be a little more height involved with the double floor system. Um, this is, this is Chris. Okay. So the overall height is 29.8 at its highest point. Um, the trim is white. The sash is white. The roof is dual black. And the doors are Hamilton blue or the front door at least. Okay. All right. Um, we know that the roof walk posts need to run through. That was something that I didn't catch when he was showing them to me before we printed these. So we know that. Roof walk seems really huge too. I mean, and, uh, a little bit about the width that I see right there. I think also Chris might be on waiting to, I don't see him. Oh, he is there. I'm here. Yes. Thank you. Hey, Chris. Introduce yourself to the Hi. gang. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris from Dreamline. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, so let's see what you guys have to say. Okay. Who would like to begin? Uh, I'll begin if you want. Sure. Go ahead. It, uh, I think as you say, the, the uh, roof walk is, is large. How long is the, the roof ridge all the way? Uh, well, the building is 72. Overall? But the, roof walk, the roof plane itself that's unbroken is not 72. It is... Um, let me see if I can see that. Hold on. Val, I have it at 14 feet, if that helps. No, it's not. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, it's Seven, 17 Diane feet. is talking about go, the ridge that goes from oh, cable to sorry. cable. I apologize. It's okay. It's uh, 44, the middle. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I just think that the difference between the roof after the uh, gables is such a, a minute drop that it's going to be perceived as all one roof ridge, I believe, I would think, looks that way to me with some thing, I don't know whether it's a two foot drop or what that two foot is, but I it needs to be dropped more. That's a pretty expansive building for that particular uh, road going down Blueberry Lane, which is a very, very simple uh, street. Everything is set back from the road uh, and it's it's Nat Lowell's house, and then it goes down in dead ends. So I just, I think it's very big the way it's set up without any breaking. I don't see the other elevations. I don't know what's going on on the mm -hmm. uh, north. Or uh, I'd like to see it more. I'd like to see the double windows in both gables on both elevations side elevations to be a single window, not two walled windows. And same on the left elevation. And I guess if we could drop down and the right elevation, it's the same. It, it has no additive massing. This is an area, I believe, on South Shore Road and the side streets for additive massing. This is 
has none. And what are the windows on the rear elevation? Uh, They're fixed, like picture windows, the which I don't think you'll see because there's another lot behind this. Okay, this is all right, but it, this would in reality face Augie's junkyard, right? If there wasn't, yeah, another, yeah, and it's okay. indented right there. Right, I just wanted to get it yeah. so. That's where I thought it was going in. Uh, can I can I interrupt just for a second? I thought I thought that the front of the house was facing Augie's place. No. Am I wrong. Yeah. I am. Yep. Yes, I'm wrong. Yes, you're wrong. Uh, uh, okay, so the back of the house is facing Augie's. It's yes. facing the lot in back of it that faces Augie's. Oh, 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 okay. So Got the it. two covenant homes are are, a, are right on the other side of Augie's fence there, chain link okay. fence, Got and it. then these two houses yeah. are facing Blueberry. All right, I see it now in the locust. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. Diane, continue. I'm by sorry. The north, yeah, that's why the north elevation, but you're going to see the east and the and the west uh and the south you're going to see those other three as you go to come up south shore road blueberry turn in and folger or field there it's right there it's not hidden so that is for now what i've got to say it needs to be reduced it needs some additive massing the the mold windows and the gables have to be reduced and <clears throat> The mold window on the rear, well, you won't see the rear elevation. I'll take it back. Um, so that's basically what I'm saying for now. There, it's more, but I'll, I'll go with that for now. Okay, thank you, Diane. How about you, Abby? Mm. Let's see, we'll get back to Abby. I think she's muted. How about I'm here. You? I'm oh, here. there you go, Abby. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I did want to go after Diane because we had similar thoughts. Um, but I first wanted to say that I, I think just because these are modular homes, I don't think we throw out the height thing. I mean, it seems, you know, that, uh, you know, that's almost 30 feet in a, in a neighborhood that is uh, is if if I remember this correctly, it's th there are some smaller homes around. Um, uh, I think you guys should view. Also. All right, well, let me finish it, Val, okay. because I, I, overall, I mean, I have gone over in that area, and it just this uh, this house also looks very massive, and I think it's because the you know it's not broken up; it doesn't have additive massing. It looks like two major gables coming forward um and uh the ridge line looks very long and unbroken even if it's those two peaks like cut through it it's it just appears as a very long line um it, it actually looks like two condos to me it doesn't look like a single family home and I just have, I think it has a very big presence. So I, I, um, I don't know how you can mitigate that, but that's my first impression. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abby. Carrie. Um, I agree on the massiveness. I think it's the third floor that's doing it for me. It's just, it's a three-story building and the two, the two gables on the end elevations, so I guess the east and west, um, those, the proportion seems funny to me. Um, and the double windows in there sort of crammed in, but it it's the nature of the full three-story building, basically, um, that seems so massive. And yeah, I agree, 72 feet long with very little obvious broken broken ridge and then as ray pointed out on the last project the roof walk is too long with no breaking of the vertical um in the middle uh 
yeah, it just, it reads as a humongous house in a, I think this, I've, I've driven through this neighborhood a lot. There are some big buildings, but they're more like barns than they are houses. Um, and I agree with the additive massing. Some of it has to reduce somehow and be broken into smaller pieces to read as additive. That's it. Okay, thanks, Carrie. Uh, well, I think once again, the other board members have really captured my uh, concerns with this. It's mass, the size of the roof walk. I actually, and to Carrie's point, you know, this being a three story building, I don't like the flush gables that face out to the two sides. I'd, I'd like to see those just disappear completely. Um, in addition to some of the other measures that have been discussed to try and get the massing of the building down. That's it for me for now. Uh, should we get some revision motion to hold for revisions? Okay, I'll take that motion. Thanks, Abby. On That's that on that motion, um, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. Now on to lot two B, I guess. to a to b okay this is a covenant home for sam herrick and his wife very basic like a lot of the houses out there in the area across the street next door And the trim is natural to weather, black Ico roof shingles and, uh, oh no, I take that back. It's white trim, sorry. White trim, Nantucket red door, white sash, black roof. And how tall is it? This is 29.3. Can we see the other elevations? Hmm. I do have uh, some pictures of some houses, um, you know, immediately next to this that are fairly similar, which I'd love to show if people are interested. Okay. Are we ready? Do you want me to or no? Um, do you want to show photos of, of context? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to see it? Sure. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. That's 29. Can I stop you right there? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna just start right in with my comments. You see how the eave of that house runs right above the windows? Yeah. Like that. Um, that was gonna be a comment of mine on, on the, the project we're reviewing right now. I also believe that that roof is at least an eight and 12. Mm -hmm. And my guess is that building is probably 27 feet high. Um, and you notice that the space between the sill of the second floor window and the head of the first floor window is not that egregious. So continue. I just thought that that's a good example as a comparison. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do I share another picture? Do I go out of this and come back in? Oh, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, hold on. <laughs> I 
This is across the street. It's 25, um, which actually also is a modular and that's its adjacent barn. Oh, uh, we don't see anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't? No. No. How come? I don't know. <laughs> I am so good at this. <laughs> How about now? Yes. Okay. Uh, right across the street, 25 South Shore Road, and it's a, a accompanying barn. And I got one more, hold on. Oops. I wish I was better at this. Can you see it? Mm -mm. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is uh, the property right next door, Nat Lowell's new house he just built, which was also a modular that has a house uh, with a garage apartment attached. See, it's funny because same thing there, the eave is right above the uh, second floor windows and that's gotta be at least an eight and 12 roof pitch. Okay. So anyway. Anyway, that's for your viewing pleasure. Okay, thank you. Was that it? Yeah, for right now. So board members, are we ready? Yep. Who said that, Val? I mean, uh, Diane? <laughs> wait, wait, no, no Carrie. Sorry, I did. Yep. I have the same exact concerns as you do. The seven pitch just doesn't seem right to me. And if they could just lower the plate a little bit, they could probably keep that height um and get an eight pitch um but that's my only issue okay thanks especially because it's forward gable right yes um abby yeah so i, I was wondering about that forward gable i was wondering um because it looks kind of federal style in it in a in a way but uh, did, did you think of doing the gable going the other way? Um, just a thought. Um, I don't know. It needs um, it needs something. I don't I don't know whether it's the renderings of these or what makes them come across as sort of rudimentary or something. Um, I don't know what it is. Like, the, is the trim thin or, I don't know. Oh, uh, so I did on the left elevation, this is the right of, uh, on the left elevation, the fenestration seemed sort of um, like arbitrary. Could we go to the left elevation? Um, it's really the, just the, wind, the window yeah. configuration. Yeah, there. Um, oh, very arbitrary. And there's that one window in the middle of the first floor that's higher than the other ones on either side. Yeah, I'd like to see that sort of uh, balanced something. Um, maybe a fascia board on below the roof line or something, something to give this some unity. Um, I think it needs a little more work. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Abby. Um, Diane. Diane. Muted. I said, I think the house is too tall. It is a secondary house on this property. Uh, on the lot. property um, <laughs> different lot. It's still too high. There's absolutely no additive massing. It is a, a rectangle and that's it. It needs to come down. It's in a rural area of, of old, of South Shore Road. This is not a rural house. It, it, it's 30 feet or four inches from being 30 feet tall. We're supposed to keep in mind having the surrounding area fit in. Four houses 30 feet tall in this area 
is not what's there or has been there. There are barns, which are 30 feet tall, that propose themselves as barns. But this is a house. And I can't see, all I've got is the front elevation. I have nothing else. I don't have a site plan, but it needs to be broken down. So it has some additive massing. They have enough room to make additive massing, drop the height and take the building out. I um, don't think that the building is. Yeah, yeah what Val? No, I was just going to say I would like to hold uh, for revisions and also request that you guys view. I can see you having some concerns with the larger houses, but these are really not significantly different from what's there. And these, this is a covenant home, so they're trying to keep it as simple as possible. But we will hold and make some revisions. And we'd I like don't to, can I we'd speak? Like to hold the other two as well. Can I speak? <laughs> No way. Can I finish? <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead, Diane. I just, it isn't not simplicity, it is the height and not dropping it down. A covenant home can still have one story areas and not be 30 feet tall to be a good covenant home. It should tuck in neatly with what's around and be part of the landscape and part of the streetscape. That's all. Sorry. Thank you, Diane. Right. I, I'm just going to add one thing. The 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 problem. One of the problems. One of the problems for me with modulars is this box thing, which I've talked about ad nauseum at other meetings. Um, is is further um, aggravated by the fact that we have a nine foot high ceiling on the first floor. So that means that this porch that I'm looking at right now. I said, well, the eave of the porch should be down at the level of the window heads, but then that's gonna mean like you'll need a 12 and 12 roof pitch to have it look like fill up the space between the sill of the second floor windows and the head of the first floor windows. So the, something's gotta give that, you know, it's gotta come down. There's way too much space between the second floor and the first floor windows, but the rest, of my concerns have been voiced. Um, so Val, you want us to hold this for revisions, but did you say you also want to hold the other two for revisions? Is that, yep. Is that right? Oh, okay, clear. that's my motion. Okay, so just to be clear on the motion, we would be holding um, number five, number six, and number seven on our agenda for revisions. And that is Abby's motion. So on the motion- And the view. Oh, oh, and a view. Yeah, I think that's important. Yes, and a view. Thank you very much, Diane. Um, so on Abby's modified motion, Carrie? Aye. Thank you. Um, Abby? Aye. Diane? Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. So now we're down to Lisa. I think I saw her on here. And that, of course. Oh, wait, one before Lisa. Hollister Road. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, up. Oh, oops. I got a little carried away with my pencil. Okay, so yes, Hollister Road. Helter Skelter. Yes. Helter Shelter. Do we have somebody on for to represent? Yeah, I'm here. Can you okay. hear me? Yep. Thanks. Hi, it's Jason Albers. Hey. All right, you're looking for, well, why don't you tell us what you're looking for? Uh, this is was already approved and I went back for a uh, amendment to the previous approval. Mainly the, the big change would be the, 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 um, the pergola detail on the front of the house, which I guess is the Northwest elevation. Um, and we changed the stair layout a little bit. There was, the grade was different than we expected on site. So we want, we changed the stairs. They're going to be um, a little deeper than we thought. And we just, just a few minor changes with the depth of the deck. So so on this page here, A201, you can see the previous approved north elevation. Um, you can see the existing elevation and then the proposed elevation. 
Um, it's mainly that uh, new pergola design from the previous pergola design. Um, I'm trying to figure out your, your uh, color thing. So if, oh, I see existing North, previously approved, proposed, got it. Yeah. Okay. What was it before, Jason? The, the, the pergola that is, what, what was You can kind of see it in the previous drawing number three. It's, was this gonna be three, three brackets with like a few like vertical members on top, like four members? You can see it in this same page, drawing number six all the way to the right. Um, or sorry, drawing number four all the way to the right. Um, yeah, yep, your, your cursor is right near there, a little to the right. Um, and this is more of an angled um, rafter with a tail uh, going across the facade rather than just brackets with some cross members. Uh, okay, so Jason, um, why on the east elevation is the whole porch bubbled? I don't, well, I did, I did adjust the, um, the depth of the deck. We made it. We made it a little bigger. Aha! And so we don't really see that on the east elevation, but we would see that on the north elevation, presumably. Right. 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 The depth oh, is bigger on the north elevation. Yeah. 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 And one of the reasons why is because to match up the front deck and the back deck, they're kind of uh, they were set at different heights, so we're redoing all of them, and then we wanted to make sure the stairs didn't run past. Uh, the deck that we want, I want to have the bottom of the stairs not past the outside of the deck. So there's no dimension anywhere though. No, yeah, how wide is the deck? The proposed new deck is nine six. Where's John McLaughlin? I know. You know what? I don't think it's significant in this case. It's in a corner, and part of it is a like access way to the stairway so what is the trim too, by the way color the color is natural to weather oh okay that makes it a little more palatable thank you um okay board members let's see who wants to start i will yeah go ahead i think it's um an improvement hugely over what's existing and I have no problem with the extra foot in the deck. It's tucked into a corner and I, I don't think that it's gonna be discernible and the eight foot thing is sort of a random rule oh, that came into play. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, thanks Val. Abby? I, it's to me it seems ex excessive um i don't i don't care about the lower basement floor how far that comes out because i think with vegetation and so forth you're not going to see it but i think uh i i'm i mean i could we go back to the locust map actually and and could you tell me exactly where this is yeah so if you if you're if you go down old tom nevers road there's a cut through over to i think um <laughs> I can't remember the name of the road, but um, <laughs> it's like it's it's another t turn off of that cut through over to Chuck Hollow. So oh, you yeah. go to Old Tom Rivers Road. There's a cut through a dirt little bumpy road to, to Chuck Hollow slash Sandborg Road, okay. um, and it's Hollister's off of that. Okay, I get the context now. I I um yeah, there are a lot of upside down houses and lots of yeah. um sort of weird uh upper decks and um so i i get it now and this um, is at the end of that dead end street you know mm -hmm. okay well jason you should tell us that it's not going to be visible <laughs> i don't think it's going to be visible uh, mm -hmm. um all right I, i'd like to hear from somebody else <laughs> oh, okay carrie i don't mind the deck being enlarged the the rafters i don't know why it's just simply not a roof it looks kind of like an undone roof um, <laughs> rather than a pergola because it's not a pergola anymore it's now an undone roof <laughs> so 
But again, if it's not visible, it's tucked back on a dirt road. I don't think it's that big of a deal, mm. truly. Okay, thanks. Diane. Uh, I think the extra foot on the deck is would be hard to perceive. The uh, the pergola has become that roof for for what reason? The what? Uh, Diane, it's 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 really an aesthetic thing. It's That's the design. Yeah, it's 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 not really a roof. It's a pergola, but it's just a sloped pergola, you know, so it's gone from being flat to being pitched. That's all. Okay. Well, that's not that bad. Is the, uh, and the uh, railings of the porch, second floor porch, are they, what color are they going to be? Natural to weather or are they painted? I believe they're natural to weather. Yeah, I, I believe. Um, I, I don't. I don't, let me see here. I'm pretty sure though. Does somebody in the office have that application? I'm gonna put up right now. My own. Well, we could make that part of the. If we approve it, we could say that it's natural to weather. Mister well, Chair, yeah. you're even existing right, well, deck there. Hold on, folks. Uh, I think I heard Holly. No, you heard Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Sorry, Kathy. Um, it should be on, Holly should be able to scroll up to the top. It's part of the PDF. Right. Uh, we'll need to zoom in a little bit there. It might not be written on there. Probably not. It's probably in the original. Let me look for the original. Uh, let's see. We scroll down a little bit to where the color thing is down the bottom. Oh, nothing. No. Nothing. Oh, so it's up to us. <laughs> Well, I could say uh, motion to approve with natural to weather. Um, everything. Everything. <laughs> I must right. have photos in my original. Here we are. <clears throat> Listen, so that was a motion, right, Abby? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. Okay, on that motion, Diane. Okay, aye. Thank you, Diane Val. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, there it goes. And Good it job. is natural to weather. It is. <laughs> oh, That's part too. <laughs> Good right. job. We're all set. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, see you later, Jason. Um, and now, Diane, if you could take this one, I think Lisa's on board. I'm on. Okay, all right. I'm going to. Here I am. Okay. Lisa. Hi. This is an application for a paddle court. I think, it, I mean, I would call it a paddle court, but it's a particular court that comes from, I believe, um, Spain. And um, it's, <laughs> it's deep into this property at 21 Hill Point Road. Um, I had sent some photos of the cleared area where the court is going and that they put up full height height poles within that vegetation, um, you know, to show that it's really, it's well screened. They're not cutting down any other vegetation in there. So I don't oh. think the visibility is, um, you know, from the road exists or from the road in the back, which is, um, Oh, I'm going to forget the name of that road in the back. Let's see. Let me think about that. Sw um, uh, Swift Rock, because it's all behind the existing house. It's actually going up in this left corner. Uh, other side, right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll go. Um, <laughs> you can go. Yeah. I, 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 I miss paddles so much. Anybody that's going to have this court, I'm so envious. And I know that's one of the cardinal sins, but envy. But um, <laughs> this is great. Um, I miss it so much. I think I think it's gonna. I think it's not gonna be seen, and I'm good with it. Okay. Well, we'll go with the envious commission. And Abby is done, and Val is next. 
I actually did go out and view this and I don't believe you're going to see anything the way the okay. vegetation is and where it's sitting. So I have no problem with this. Um, uh, Carrie. I agree. I have no problem. Um, I'm just wondering about lighting. Is there going to be lighting? Uh, that's a good question, Carrie. Um, I would think there might be some lighting, but if that's a concern, I could get, I, I, I can get further, um, information on that. Well, I'm very familiar with paddle courts and the lights and a lot of times they face down, mm -hmm. um, depending on the size of the court. So I would just say, check it out and make sure they're facing down and it's not going to be disturbing neighbors at night. Okay. I can Fair make enough. that part of my motion if you wanted, um, Diane, that okay. the lights be face That's down right. into the court. What are the sides of the court? Is it like the tennis court? No, it's glass. It's glass with a little bit of uh, uh, mesh above. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I, I don't play, unfortunately, so I, I didn't know. I don't yeah, either. Okay, so what? I hope to. The... Uh, the way you were going to propose it, Abby, was you were going to have it on your motion with the lights facing down, right? Exactly. That's my motion, okay. Madam Chair. So, to approve as submitted uh, with the lights for the evening shining down. <clears throat> Carrie. Aye. Oh. Val? Aye. Okay, Carrie and I will be an aye. So that is all Thank for. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thanks. All Thank right, next, next up 24 Westchester. I think Matt's on. No, that's right. Matt, are you on board? Yes, I am, Mr. Okay, so uh, fenestration change is what we say here. Uh, sure. So these are uh, this is a structure. It's an existing garage uh, that we had done a. Uh, in addition to, and uh, you've already approved it, and the owner had wanted to make uh, some additional minor changes, and uh, so I can kind of walk the board through those. Probably starting on A two point one is uh, probably the. Um, if you're familiar with the site, if you recall, it's at the end of a very long driveway, so I don't really think a lot of this is visible, and I think that we determine that. Uh, however, I will just start through the elevations uh, on the east elevation, which is drawing one. We had uh, three French doors uh, in the center there, and that was switching to just three uh, countertop height uh, windows. So it was kind of an interior change, if you will. Um, on the left side of the east elevation, uh, again, a fenestration uh, change uh, uh, to a single six light uh, window. And, and actually, there, what there was, there was a, uh, a covered roof, a hip roof, uh, and we're basically just proposing to enclose it. Uh, the previous approval had a breezeway, which was shown in the elevation, which we are omitting. So the, the breezeway will not be there. And so this is literally just enclosing uh, an area underneath an existing hip roof, just to pick up some extra storage space. Um, the, um, on the garage doors, this is, uh, we looked at the original garage doors, the existing garage doors, you'll see in the existing condition drawings over here. Um, we had these uh, different doors approved. We looked at the original doors, they're actually in pretty good shape, so we just wanted to keep them. So that, that was a change. Okay. Um, on the south elevation, we changed from um, three French doors to just windows. Uh, so again, on the right, you can see the previous uh, approved three French doors is just going to three windows, gonna make that an office. Mm -hmm. Um, on A2.2, which is the next sheet, uh, these are some 
uh, fairly minor changes, fenestration changes um, from three windows to two. Uh, and we added a, a window on the left side of that first floor on that on that north elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then probably the most significant change would be the west elevation, which is on the bottom half of this page. So this is tucked in behind uh, the structure. And I just really don't think this is uh, visible. The reason we went with this roof shape was just because it's an inside corner, like the an inside of the, the floor plan is a bit of an L shape in this section. And uh, we ended up moving the stairwell into this corner uh, of the house. And as such felt that this uh, hip roof element was the most appropriate. Again, it doesn't project any higher over the existing ridge height. So again, while um, kind of unique massing schematic, again, not really visible, I don't think for, from anywhere. So um, those are the changes, Mr. Chair. There's also some first floor minor changes, but uh, again, maybe going back to the site plan, you can kind of, for a reference point, see where that is. But those those are the changes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Matt. Chair, yes. I do have comments from HSAB. Okay, great. Oh, and can you do, uh, while you're doing that, just hold on the, uh, the site plan here. Uh, great. Okay, so yes, go ahead. Um, one of the comments was we need photos. Uh, there was no photographs included in the application. Um, didn't like the tower. The tower is inappropriate, might be visible from Lily Pond Park. Um, however, there wasn't another member who said that there's, didn't believe that it would be visible um, and that it was um, kind of funky like the raised court um, structure is, a historic dwelling off a of raised court. Hmm. Um, that it was a cool feature, um, but not for this particular dwelling that it was jammed in. Um, and then the, there was a comment on the west elevation that it seemed to be uh, one large monolithic face. So those are the comments from each sub. Okay, thank you. Board members, are you ready? I can go. Great, Abby, thank you. I, di I didn't see a problem with the change except for that tower thing. I didn't see that at first. I don't know whether it's visible from the pond or not. Um, I think West, I don't think you're going to see that directly on. I think you're going to see more uh, it, it is kind know. of tucked in that recess and um yeah we we if i could mr chair just we did look at like a straight gable and we probably could make that work but it actually looked well you know, looked matt, awkward matt just yeah i appreciate that but why don't we hear to see whether there's any concern with this before you start changing it um those so, are my only comments Okay, so Abby, you're you're in doubt as to whether this is even going to be visible. But if it were visible from Millie Pond, would you be concerned about it? Well, well I know, you know what? I know it's not visible. I go there every single day yeah, and look I'm, back. I'm pretty at darn it. sure that this is. Not I, I you cannot see honestly. You cannot see this. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, and, right. That's pretty much. It's kind of a a west, but there's another. Uh, point that I, I don't I don't know what it is whether it's northwest or what it is but I don't know what that angle is but yeah I don't I really don't think you can see that so I'm okay with all the changes all right thank you Abby Carrie um, I appreciate that you can't see that piece but I just wonder why it can it drop a little bit so it's not above the main mass plate height? And that Eve line, it's it reads as a tower because it's ta it is above the main um, Eve line, and I just wonder if you drop it down to tuck it in, it would truly just disappear. I could probably do that. I think we're clear in the headroom department, but um, I mean it almost looks like it's only about six inches, so I could I could probably do that. You mean bring it down so it's, it's in line with the continual line? Eve yeah, line. it's a yeah. continual line. Hmm. Yeah, it would... interesting point. Right, exactly. Um, okay, 
So is that it, Carrie? Yeah, all the other changes are great and they were minimal, but they made slight nice difference. Yeah, thanks. Val. Um, I don't know if you'll see it either. I think what we'll see the most of is the north looking down the driveway, if you can see it from there. Um, I just had a thought and it's just a thought. Matt, what if you made that just a shed roof um, from the, the gable that it's coming off of and it just dies into the thing next to it on the left and that way that roof would just not um, focus on it being a tower. It would just simply be like a shed element. But the, but the shed would actually be proud of the piece that it's coming off of, you know? I thought that was set back right there. You know, it's going to be very, very difficult for me to explain this. But like, have you ever seen a shed? Shed, like the face of the shed is usually in line with the face of the, uh, well, either in line or actually recessed from the face of the wall plane around it. In this case, the tower is projecting past the the um, part that you're talking about. No, it's set back. It's, I think you can see it in floor plan. I mean, again, I think with that shed, uh, I think it is possible what you're suggesting, Val. I'm pretty sure it would be. I, I just was thinking of it because then it wouldn't frame it like a tower and it would just look like a another section of the roof, but I'm not. I just you think know. getting from here with a four pitch back on will be a little bit tricky, but honestly, we're open to anything. It's just more, I mean, I thought that ironically the tower, like the, you know, the tower, when you hear a tower, you think, you know, this big tall thing, but um, for whatever reason, it seemed to kind of be the, the least uh, invasive. The other options we looked at straight gables. We didn't look at a shed, I will say, um, but it kind of drew more attention to it. So. So what really about a, a cottage corner instead of a corner board? Um, on the structure, sure. On the on the right there. Yeah, I'm happy to get rid of that. I don't, again, yeah. The other thing I just noticed from your floor plan is you don't need you need the head height where the double hung window is, but that transom up above you don't need that head height at all. You know the slope of the roof can follow the the pitch of the stair and you know back to Val's point like the shed could almost be kind of a broken back that came off of that main ridge that we're looking at on the west elevation. Oh, I, see what you're I could if I did that then I think we could probably align it on this lower. Uh, yeah it definitely could yeah and it would be that would be more like a broken back uh, thing than than a shed quote unquote. I'm happy to do that. Well, okay. So let's see, Diane. Have we heard from you yet? I, um, I don't think we have. Diane. I don't see her picture. Uh -oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was trying to conduct some business here. I think that you see the three gables, and. I don't know whether you absolutely won't see them or not, depending on what is growing in the lily pond area. But I think the broken back thing makes makes much more sense and much more attractive and getting out the the gable of the tower, so-called. I don't like you got one, two, three, four gables along that wall. And I think that's too many. So I go with the broken back. So Matt, I'm pretty sure that you can do that. So the question becomes whether we want to see this again or whether this is through a, a through staff thing, if you're confident that you can get what we're requesting to work. I think I can. I, I also don't think you need to necessarily do a four pitch. If it's a three or three and a half, who's going to see it? Yeah, nobody. Yeah, right. and I think that the emphasis would be on not seeing it and downplaying it over whether it's really a four pitch or not. Can, can I see the site plan? I can tell, I mean, I can tell you right now if you can see it. I honestly can, because I, I go there three times a day to walk the dog. And I look back like all the time. So 
So it's the back of it is the right um, that that little where the where the arrow yeah. is is exactly where this the turret is. I have never right. seen this building. Honest to wicked God. You're, you're talking about the existing building, not right. The, the existing building, I've never even yeah, because seen this, it. this is actually behind the building that you can't see. Yeah. So, so yeah. Having, having, oh, Mr. Chair, and if this price is that, big. I can make the. I think we can make the shed work, but we're totally. Why don't, why don't we just do it? You know, this would be like the safe route, okay? Because I actually think it would be very. It'll work really well. Um, so you're confident you can do it either as a broken back or, or something like that. Um, does somebody want to make that motion? I will. Okay. I'll make Hang on. Di Di uh, Val is, is uh, working on a motion. Val? Motion to approve through staff with the West, um, we'll call it tower structure to change its roof to a shed. Correct. Through staff. Okay, very good. On that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. Okay, and I'm in favor. There you go. All right. Now we got 28 Eel Point Road. Uh, I can start there. Yeah, that would be great. So this is a really minor change. This is kind of more of a, a detail, uh, more of a proportion um, request. Uh, and it's on the north elevation, um, the north and the south elevation. And essentially what it is, it's just changing the proportion of the gambrel roof pitches. You know, leading up to the construction, I was just looking at it. I think it's a great sheet to stop on. <clears throat> and... Uh, basically, where the secondary uh, rafters uh, transition, essentially what I was trying to do is the existing approval, I felt that there was like some extra uh, shingle area or wall area above the window. And what I wanted to do is actually lower, lower that portion, uh, lower that transition point. And so it's really this piece here. I don't know if you can see, I just marked up the, on the reduced previously approved uh, HTC. Oh, the, yeah. Yep. Were. And what I was trying to do is get that point and have a transition closer to the header of the window. And so it's really a proportion. It's a, it's a slight pitch change and it's about trying to lower that point because I just thought aesthetically it looked better. Um, it does translate into uh, the, the top portion of the ridge increasing slightly. That's, we're not trying to get extra ceiling height or head height or anything. It's just purely aesthetics. I felt that that transition point just looked better lower. Um, I can't read those numbers. What? How much has the ridge gone up? It doesn't look like by much. Four and a half, four and a half inches. And I didn't want to, it was uh, such a small amount, but uh, four and a half inches, I think is what it says. Right. So you increase the roof pitch on the top cord, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And so it's purely- And you dropped, you dropped the intersection point, but you're sort of like doing a seesaw around the midpoint. So it gets a little higher on the high end and a little lower on the low end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And, and right. The only other change, Mr. Chair, is on the west elevation. Oh. There's a small, there's a railing uh, that we're adding because there was an existing walkout. Uh, and again, the trim is natural, uh, is gray. So there's that railing on the bottom section. And then this piece was kind of annoying me where we had this, um, if you look at the previous iteration, this rake stopped at the mm -hmm. E1, the mm -hmm. secondary additive piece. Mm -hmm. and it just looked a little awkward and I thought it would be better to continue the roof line of that Gambrel roof. So it's just adding okay. a rake board. Those, those are the changes. Okay, very good. Thank you, Matthew. Um, board, Val. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think it, it does look good. I hesitate to give any more height to this building, <laughs> um, whether it's four inches, the other one's seven. Um, 
and I don't mind about the railing. I just think it's, uh, as, as I forget who used to say this, death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. That would have been me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, that's my comment. Okay. Thanks, Val. Uh, Diane. I think, uh, I agree with Val on the height and the whatever. I don't mind that leg coming down on the east elevation, not ending. I think it looks better than ending on that uh, on that eave right there. So, are you going to see all the sides of this, Matt? I didn't think so. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. Um, not, not probably not the rear elevation, but um, you know, depending on where you're coming from, you will, you will. I think you'll see it. You know, it's going to be landscape. You're not going to, you're not, are you going to see the south elevation? No, no, I don't think so. No, that's that's no. one elevation no, thought, you won't see. Correct, but I think yeah, that's what I thought that you wouldn't. That. You know, the West, you, you'll, you'll so see. I, I appreciate Right. You'll see everything else. I just didn't think you'd see the South. I Definitely. appreciate the changes, but I would like to see the building not get any higher. What, what is its full height now? Um, you know, from grade... I'd have to uh, get that because we took it from the lowest grade. I want to say 27 feet one. Well, there's a there's a dimension line right on the north elevation. Yeah, I think it says 27 one if you zoom in there. And again, I it's, can't. Um, do I would also say but that that's it, good. I. It's we did try to keep it low. We actually utilized the Gambrel roof. 27 to try seven. Pick up as much um, roof line as possible. The trim color is gray. The sash color is gray. And the only other thing I would point out is that the only, the, again, I almost, we almost debated like, geez, it's so small, but we wanted to be incredibly transparent. And the fact that it is kind of within the roof walk, I don't think that the, um, yeah, that's my it point. affects it much, but I just wanted to be crystal clear. I know that the board has been incredibly, this came before you a number of times. I appreciate all the input and we just wanted to look as we want to be as successful as possible. And so, I caught a lot of guff trying to even propose this idea, but I just feel like if the proportions just look that much better. And I think Ray, you, may, you even mentioned it at one point uh, and we were just looking at it. We're saying, man, if we could just lower that, that transition point, it would, it would just help. So I know it's a small request. Well, I I, I'm in, I'm in favor. Uh, you know, I, I generally don't speak out of turn like this, but uh, I actually would rather have a steeper roof pitch and have the additional four feet uh, four inches, which, no one's ever going to perceive, but the roof pitch yeah. being steeper, you will perceive, and and it, it's beneficial. It's gonna it's gonna make the building look better. So that's my view. Um, but I have some more questions. Oh, um, go ahead, uh, Matt. What's the change on the west that sort of looks like an upside down L? Uh, that's clouded. An upside down L. A red uh, bubble. The, the right here. Uh, hold on one sec. Um, oh, well, Val. Yeah. If you look at the previous, you see that the the um, rake, the gambrel rake is discontinuous. It stops. And so Matt just wants to complete that, which I think is probably a good idea. You see what? the difference? Do you see Matt's blue, aqua blue line there? I'm looking at it on my computer oh. in a blown up okay. size. Oh. Uh, okay, let me look at yours. So no, not that. Not that. No, oh. it, it, the one I'm looking at that got sent to us, um, you know, for us to look at when we were viewing, it was, it's in the front of the building near the porch. Hmm. And so it's not on can... this one. We should not be looking at the west elevation, is what you're saying? No, I'm saying what I got is different. <laughs> oh, okay. You said it's on the north elevation, Val? It's, it says east and west, and it also has on the south, or is this a previous approval? 
Uh, it's probably the previous approval. Those are the only changes that we were presenting. Okay, so never mind. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve. Well, I, I appreciate I, that. Let, let's just make sure they carry. Yeah. Who said what that? I, what a question I had is, do you think that the the roof walk skirt is appropriate on this house? It's already approved. Yeah, it's already approved, Diane. Oh, okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, but Carrie, do you have anything you want to say on this one? Uh, I like the gambrel changes. Um, gambrels are tricky, and I just wish the gambrel on the west would change too. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Me too. But it, it is, is not, approved that way. Yeah, that's too bad. But, but hopefully, it's not visible. No, it's visible. But it's visible, mm. yes. Meaning, meaning you'd prefer like a steeper upper portion. Yeah, yeah, because then it will now. Yeah. But it's it's not really even a gambrel, it's a mansard. Yeah, and it's not. I don't know. It's very yeah, flat. Well, yeah, whatever. It's done. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, the, the the horse left the cart or the cart is gone rolling down the hill on this it's, one. The cart is rolling. Feel better. Like the that portion of the building was a portion that I think that during the approval we were trying to drop as much. Right. So your floor level actually steps down about 24 hey, inches. Hey, listen, Matt, love all that, but I want to move this along. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this Stick is with this what is we're supposed to be reviewing here. Brain damage here. Can, okay. can I make okay. a motion to approve now? Uh, yeah. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Okay. That's my motion. All right. Thanks, Abby. On the motion, Val. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Abby. Aye. Ray. Aye. Aye. Um, okay, that's that. And now, let's see, we did 28 Eel Point Road, 14 Easy Street. Fenestration change. Mr. Chair, I do have HSAB comments for the commission. Okay, hit it. Okay, so uh, sliders are not appropriate in the old historic district. A 10 light is more appropriate in swinging, like the existing that's on the structure, the current doors, um, and prefer three doors versus four doors. Okay. We'll get to the elevation. Oh. Okay, yeah. Oh, mm hmm. Got it. So if I could, Mr. Chair, this is um, this is pretty much, yeah, uh, fenestration change, second floor. Mm. The new owner uh, requested this uh, operation and uh, configuration, and um, that's what we're here for. So I think it's pre pretty straightforward. So I look forward to the board's comments. Thank you. OK. Abby. Over fenestrated. I like the previous. Okay, thank you. Carrie? I agree, um, but I the previous has horizontal light, so that doesn't work either. Yeah. So that's maybe right. Just vertical 15 light doors. Oh, they're, they're, that's what exists. Yeah. They're just drawn wrong. Thank you, Abby. That's what I was going to say. They're drawn. Okay. Wrong. So they want to change from what what this has to more door. Yeah. Uh, instead of going to three, they they're looking for four four lights. I don't know. I think there was a uh, that's obviously a drafting error. I apologize for the previously approved because. Well, that's that's good. I mean. Yeah, you know, it's a good thing, right? It's better installed than than it does in the drawing. Yeah. So I'm glad that it turned out that way. Um, but so, Carrie, continue. I don't have anything else to say. I like the 15 light. I like the way it is. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Val. I c completely agree with HSAB. I think it's too much. And then to have those doors open right there, um, yeah. it's just a really highly visible building. And 
and um, I don't think the change is positive. Thank you. Diane. Uh, what's the age of the building? Uh, about <laughs> six months ago. Uh, 2014. Really? Was oh. it? Well. Really? 14 Easy Street. I thought it was what the real estate office. Show oh, the picture, the old days. Holly. No, that's killing. It's right next right, door. And then where were the Youngs? This it's was right next door, right. Diane. Yeah. Are you, so, okay. Okay. I, um, I think that the what those four, two over two windows is inappropriate for the house. Sure. So I'm I stay with what we have. Okay, thanks, Diane. And I feel the same way. This is sort of like a step in the wrong direction, in my opinion. Um, so can I have, well, oh, okay. Uh, so Matt, yep. it doesn't look like you're getting a lot of support for the four openings. Sure. Do you want to um, reconsider? What? I was just going to ask if I could just hold for revisions because- Yeah, uh, we can do that for you. Yeah. We should okay. think of something else. Um, did you That's just make motion. a motion, Abby? Yeah. Okay, great. On the motion, Val. Aye. Thanks, Diane. Aye. Thank you, it's Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, thanks, Matt. Aye. Maybe we'll see, oh, we will see you later in, in about 30 seconds. Aye. Okay, Aye. next up, 78 Milk. Do we, is Mark on board? I don't see him. Anybody else? Not that I'm aware of. Uh. Oh. I think this is a very simple one though. Uh, hold for- one. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, like I just, if, if there's gonna be a controversy, I would rather have somebody to, uh, representing it just so they can hear what our comments Ocean are. Motion to hold for representation. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so there is the motion. On that motion, Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Abby. Aye. I'm in favor. All right. Now, so we're back to Matt. That was about 30 seconds. 10 Hickory Meadow. Is Matt still here? Yeah. Yeah. I just have to unmute. Sorry, that mute thing is driving you guys crazy. Dang. Uh, I could just jump right into it, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. So this is in a, a, an approved uh, small studio um, on uh, this property at 10 Hickory Meadow, which is at the very end of the street. Mm -hmm. um, it's tucked way back there. Uh, the actual studio originally was approved um, on consent, I think because it was so, it just, there's lack of visibility. I think it's also uh, tucked between these two buildings. Um, and so the owner was looking to, uh, it's basically an art studio and they wanted the building to be somewhat of a, I don't know if this is an appropriate term, but like more of a, a little bit of a folly to have a little bit of a different in terms of its uh, roof material and sidewall material. Uh, because the other buildings are fairly, you know, they're austere and very simple, two over two um, cottage corners. And this actually sits between the main house and, and the guest house. And um, there's a desire to change the roof material to uh, copper and the sidewall to a natural uh, vertical uh, V groove. So again, not a very standard uh, roof material, but again, I think because of the visibility, I just don't think there really is any visibility this was their, their hope. This is really a material change. The window configuration, everything else is the same. That's correct. Okay. So this is all about whether we can accept a copper roof on this structure and the natural uh, vertical siding. Yes. That seems pretty straightforward. Uh, Abby. Sorry, what's the uh, view? Oh, any, can we see this? What's the visibility? No, you can't see it. I, 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 I'm, I'm okay with it then. Okay, um, Val. So I wanted to 
think this was easy, but I didn't, I went down there and I couldn't see, has the construction started A and then B, there was no, you know, we, there was not the previous approvals of the structures around it. So, and I tried to look for them myself, but I couldn't find them. And so that would have helped me also to sort of sort out what its visibility is. And that's the reason I didn't really make a decision on it. Um, Meaning the, the main house and guest house structures, Val? Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, we did put the previous approval for this structure in there. And I think if I'm not mistaken, isn't this um, like you go past the animal hospital and yeah. it's clo closer to that end of the lot and it's up high? Yeah, well, the red, who, who just did the circling thing? That was- uh, Well, the red is a mistake because the is, yellow is where it is, blow, right? Yeah, the red is a blow up of the yellow. The yellow is where it actually is. Right. And so the way you get to it is that new road, uh, Hickory, Hickory something road? Hickory Meadow. Hickory Meadow. Meadow road that goes in sort of behind the animal hospital. And this, oh, is, yeah. a, this, this is the very this last is, lot. This, that's the, the lot name is Hickory Meadow. And that's where the driveway is. But Correct. where this construction is, is more uh, right past the animal hospital. Well, yeah. So this, as you can see from that uh, um, locust plan, the lot abuts Westchester. But do you have any access from the lot off of Westchester? They are uh, using that for access for construction, but oh. it's not the uh, it's not a curb cut. Um, so we were not allowed a curb cut on that backside. Uh, I, yeah. so you know what? Th there is ac there is access, and we're using it for construction. So the primary entrance to the to the dwelling is uh, through Hickory Meadow. There is access um, to the to the back, if you will, from Westchester. Um, but you go fine. back to the site plan now that we all are familiar with the locus. Yeah. I just, it just from the site plan looks like it's close to the road and I just. Actually, you're right. You're right. I, I couldn't tell. So I, I don't know what to say. I would, I can, um, cause it's the, the structure, the answer your question, Val, the, uh, construction is well underway. All of the structures are framed up and uh, the exterior trim is on. And this structure in particular is um, framed, but it's not sheathed. Oh, well, so, God. Well, why don't we go take a look? Yeah, yeah, sure. And then again, the landscaping's not uh, in, but um, yeah, I do think that would be helpful. Yeah. yeah Could we just take a look at that gable that's going to be facing uh, Westchester? Just to see what we would see if we could well, see the, it. The eave is actually facing. Right. Yeah, so no that's more. it there, west? No. Uh, well, is it east then? No, no, it would be south. South, yep. That's oh. what you see, yeah. That's what you're going to see looking up from Westchester. And, and to Val's point, if I could, Mr. Chair, it, there is an elevation change, um, you know, from the finished floor, first finished floor to the, to the lower level. There is a drive out, um, you know, basement, if you will. So there is an elevation change, but it, if you go back to the site plan, you'll see that it is up higher, but it is uh, kind of tucked behind the uh, what's the guest house. So, but I think a viewing would be helpful. Matt, 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 you lost me there for a second. What do you mean drive out basement? So underneath this the, was a tricky lot, if I remember correctly. Wait, can I just this this building doesn't have a basement under it, right? It, it does. It does, mm -hmm. and it actually has no, no, no. Uh, the studio. No, 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 it does not. I'm sorry, I was referring to the guest house. That is, I see, but the studio yeah. doesn't have that. The, the studio does not, but I was just trying to get context of the... Okay, I think we should view this. Yeah. All right, I so... I think the height of it with the copper roof, if it were taller, you might not perceive the copper roof very much, but because it's just a one-story building, once the copper mellows, it would be great, but... Mm. Um, yeah, is it going to mellow to like a bronze? Yeah. Yeah. That's what copper does now. Right. We don't have enough acid rain to turn it green like it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that green is off. Um, oh, boy. All right, motion to view.
Okay, so there is a motion on the table to view. On Abby's motion, Val. Aye. Terry. Aye. Diane. She's muted. Okay. Sorry. Aye. There we go. Aye. Abby. Aye. I'm in favor. Okay. That was Hickory Meadow, now uh, 36 Low Beach. Oh, yeah. And Mr. Chair, if I could just let the commission know that H or Sconset Advisory took a look at this and they had no concerns. Okay, thanks, Holly. Okay. Um, if it's okay, Mr. Chair, I could just give you a quick summary. Yeah. So this was a previously approved structure um, and we basically flipped the location. You'll see in green, it shows the outline of where the structure was previously located and it's uh, essentially being moved to the other side of the property. So this was a structure that you had approved um, previously. It's just essentially a relocation as I understand it here. Everything else is the same. I believe everything else is the same. Well, I'm sorry, stand corrected. We did make some minor changes, it looks like here. We had this window um, on the west elevation and if you look at the previous West approval, we had a door. There's now a window um, on the north. Uh, you can see we had a large pergola and that moved around to the back of the building. Uh, and then we added the outdoor shower. So pretty much minimal stuff. Okay. All right. Comments from the board. Motion to approve is submitted. Okay, I'm gonna hold that motion. Um, does anyone have anything they would like to say, anything of concern before I move forward with the vote on that? Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward with that motion. On Val's motion to approve, Abby. Aye. Harry. Aye. Diane. Aye. Val. Aye. I'm in favor. Okay. That's that. So we'll see you a little later, Matthew. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, now um, I saw Mark in the queue there. So we're at six North Wisconsin Street? No, North Street and Syasconset. <laughs> okay, I was like, where the hell is North Syasconset Street? Okay. It's just above South Street. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Mark, you there? Yes, I am. This is a uh, existing cottage from 1988, I believe, uh, an old Ed Tool spec home. Um, our clients are looking to one primarily pick it up and rotate it on the lot so it sits square to the road. Right now you'll see a ghosted profile on the site plan indicating mm. its current orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, they like to square it out. Then we have some additions to the east uh, in this plan uh, as well as some expansion to the west as well, adding an area away. So we've included photos and uh, drawings that indicate the before and afters and the elevations. And here you are. Most of that is summarized on this sheet. And Mr. Chair, yeah. Sconset Advisory, um, we're appreciative of the fact that it's going to be squared up on the lot. No other concerns. Okay, thank you, Holly. So what's not readily apparent to me, maybe just because I haven't looked at this long enough, the addition is not bubbled. It's it's not because it the whole the whole house kind of changes a little bit. So we had the photographs there, but the the addition is on the left hand side of the north elevation. That bump out, which doesn't exist in the previous, and on the on the right you can see the previous uh, as well for the north elevation, the upper right hand corner of this sheet. You can see what that front facade looks like today, as compared to the proposed just below it. If that makes sense. So they're expanding the ridge line to the right in that drawing uh, to expand that shed dormer some as well. Fenestration for the most part remains as shown with some alterations on the right-hand side. 
Um, and we think we've sort of balanced out the shed dormer with improved fenestration uh, as well. Uh, in the shutters. And is this a shutter that's to the right of the entry door? It looks like a big shutter that you sort of slide over the front. That door. whole, no, that whole, that's a good question, but no, that whole, uh, that's an inset. Uh, it's a negative massing. Uh, it's an entryway under the roof eave. And we were just going to in white do a vertical um, um, V groove board in there of about, I think we have it at eight inch width. Oh, so you mean, a, so the, the entry door and the vertical board thing are in the same plane? That's correct, right? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a recess. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Board uh, mode. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Okay, that was Abby. You're okay with it. Um, Diane? Yeah, I just uh, might think that those the big shed dormer there on the north and the south is with all the windows they've added windows to it is it's kind of big, but everybody else just may not agree. I just think that to reduce the number of windows or something. I like the north. I think it says North Elevation, that right-hand picture with the three windows up there in that dormer is good. I know that the roof has been enlarged, but it's made the dormer quite prominent over the uh, first floor. Can, can we scroll down just to see the original existing photos if possible? They're almost just out of well, or is that me? Yeah, no. Uh, we do see the existing photos. Okay. I think it's clipped on my screen for some reason. Just so you can see that, that that's a very large dormer today with only two windows in it. It's a lot of shingle mass. I would argue, though, we've lengthened it. We've actually, the added fenestration maybe balances out a, a little bit better. Maybe I'm at the wrong one, because the, the dormer that I see has three windows in it. That's the back. Yes. That's the back today. Okay. Yeah. And so there's another... Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, see that that's the front today. That right. You, right, exactly. Okay. So continue, Diane. No, that's all right. I, I think it's a cute building and whatever. I just thought that the, that the dormers on the second floor were heavy with the amount of fenestration in them. But that's just my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Val. I have no problem with this. I went out to look at it and it's way at the end of this little dead end street and um, there's hedges everywhere and vegetation. You're not gonna see it and it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Carrie. That helps me. Um, I'm just, the windows, the different types of windows are kind of disconcerting me. Just the two over twos and then the nine light and then the four light door and the front door, the little square right next to it. Mm. I would think that because this house is not so old, it might benefit to have consistent window style. On each elevation, you've got different types. And yeah, and sort of to that point, you know, these, I, I think those windows that you're showing, Mark, it's sort of hard oh. to, are they, are they six over three double hungs or are they nine light casement windows? Uh, they are a nine light. Um, so we can accommodate egress in those upper uh, areas. Okay. They're a funky window today with like a horizontal light. Um, kind of struggled because all the windows are a little weirdly, oddly proportioned. Some are too thin and tall, some are squat. Um, so we tried to, we actually did try to spend a little attention, spend some time on that. Um, and landed on this sort of mix where it, it has a kind of an odd mix to even today, but. Um, well, so it looks. I didn't even me. notice that they were different grill patterns. Oops. <clears throat> different, um, you mean than they are right now? No, no, some of the windows are two over two and some are little chiclets. Good call. And That's. 
if that's a concern across the board, we could probably look at a revision of the uh, two over two to a, maybe at that point a six over six. So it's it's a multi light pane above and below. I couldn't reduce the panes above. I don't think. I think those casements in the dormer will get odd, and probably look best as a nine light. So I'd rather alter the larger glass below, most likely, to reflect that. If that were the case. Can you? So you're, you're offering for the two over twos to go to six over six. I think so. That might be the pairing that works best to address Kara's concern. Or what about six over one or nine over one or something like that? Yeah, six over one might work. Um, it feels this feels very cottagey, whereas the six over one might feel more over six. shingle classic shingle style. But yeah. yeah, six over six is my two minute thought on that. Classic. Classic. I'd go with six over six. Okay, sounds like we might have liftoff here. I just have one other question, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, do all of the windows marked as B have to be casement windows? There's so many now, I just noticed, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Well, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 windows. They're not all egress. They, um... They're not all egress, no, um, but we just figured several of them are though. Most of them are actually. So there's only a few that access bathrooms on the second level. Um, and you just wanted to be consistent. That was my thought. And all the ones in the back you'll never see. And to your point earlier, Val, I'm not sure you're gonna see much of this west elevation either because you'd have to, cut, the road sort of ends right at the property. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, as you said, it's privated in, so. We thought it was still an improvement of our, certainly what's there today. Um, it's a little awkward looking. Well, listen, I, I think that it's a big uh, um, concession to go with the six over six, which would you know, change the character of this building. But all in all, I think it's it's looks good. I'll make a motion. Okay. To approve with the windows in the dormer going to six over sixes and that okay with the- uh... Well, no, actually what we're looking for is that the two over twos on the first floor would go to six over six. Yeah. And what about the doors, the, the glass doors? Oh yeah, that would really kind of need to change too, Mark, I think. Yeah, I would, I'm looking at that. I'm thinking maybe if we could take that to an eight light. Okay. In other words, two more horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what do you think, Val? Uh, I just think they're going to be horizontal. Oh, I thought if they you went know, the 10, they're going to be two horizontal. Be I think eight will be OK. I would want them vertically proportioned. Because the little nine lights are kind of, well, doesn't matter. Want to make? Do you want to hold for revisions and see it come back? No. No. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve Thank through you. staff. Oh. Thank you. Motion. I will. Motion to approve through staff with the first floor two over two windows or wherever there's two over twos becoming six over six. The doors that have glass in them, which would commonly be French doors or whatever, um, to have at least eight panes. Um, something that would be proportional to the rest of the panes on this structure. Yeah, because they could actually probably be 10 and still be vertically formatted in this case. But uh, that's I, I think it's at least eight panes is kind of safe. Yeah. That's your motion, right? Yeah. Okay. On that motion, um, Abby. Hi. Thanks, Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Val. Aye. I'm in favor. Okay. Thank now you. The shed. Let's go. This is my. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Wisconsin Advisory had no concerns on the shed. Okay. Thanks. Oh, wow. 
Okay. No wonder they had no concerns. <laughs> motion to approve as submitted. Okay. Thank you. On the motion, Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye, sorry. Okay, <laughs> Diane. Aye. Thank, thank you, Val. Aye. I'm in favor. All right, now one more, right, Pool. Correct. Wisconsin advisory on the pool, Holly? Yes, sir. Um, they did have comments. Hold on, I'm sorry, I stopped okay. sharing for a second. Yes, so there were concerns on where the mechanicals are, are located on the lot, um, finding a better location. Uh, there was concerns on the, the noise for the abutters, the neighbors. And there was a suggestion to move the equipment to the southeast near the back. I actually don't see where the equipment is on this drawing. Maybe it's near the site plan. They're there. Right here. Oh, or up here behind I... the shed. So uh, those were the concerns. Okay, thank you. That's a that's quite a distance to be having your pool equipment. It is. It's doable. The pumps just have to be scaled accordingly, but um. You know, we've done them even further and internalize the equipment. Mm. Um, so it's technically a, a, a works. We were trying to use the shed as a screening device, obviously, and place it in that corner. Um, I mean, from acoustics, I don't know if that's really an issue for HTC, but it is um, not. And oh, nice neighbor policy. Yeah, yeah, we would typically, these would be pitted and screened anyway. Um, we try and drop them at least 18 on a, on a gravel bed and then box them in with national weather board um because we were we were actually going to try and use that whole little pocket as honestly as a utility pocket because we'd have i think two condensers on this property which are the squares reflected there right. as well yeah. so half of what we're looking at is actually um um condensers that's not correct equipment that's right okay comments from the board what is this an application for? A pool? The pool. Or? Yeah, the pool. Uh, did you, were you going to say anything else, Abby? Well, I just, uh, can I go back to the site plan again? I just it's think up. it looks really close to the lot line, doesn't it? It's over the lot line. Right there. Well, the fencing, the fencing is over the... Yeah, side. not the pit, not the equipment. The compliance when I see the, um, the site plan, like, like, like the surround, you know, like... The aerial? Not, sorry, not the site plan, the, um, yeah. Is the shed a, a less than 200 square foot, no ground cover shed, Mark? That's correct. Oh. You're going to put it in the basement of the shed? Well, no, I was going to say, can you incorporate it in the architecture uh, of the shed so it's not yeah. so exposed, but it's somehow more concealed? Well, I guess to your point, you could create a uh, sort of a, uh, you could extend in theory, the like a, a shed maybe off the back of it, which is open right, and shingled on one side to the street oh, and partially yeah. latticed yeah. on the other side, you could encase it somewhat to that point and still not, not increase the ground cover. Right. Can I ask you a question? Sure, Diane, go ahead. On, on the site plan, it shows, if, if you could move the site plan more into the middle, so, and move the big one with the pool off, to, no, the other way. I want the little one that shows where the house is. Anyway, it shows a lot of vegetation on their property down where the pool is going. And I wondered, is right there, yes. Is that going to be removed? Otherwise, th that the pool is right smack on the property line. And it, uh, what is the setback there? So to, to answer, it's a five foot setback. 
There's right. a stockade fence located back there now. The vegetation shown in shadow on the locust is actually on yeah. the neighboring property. Interesting. Yeah, so they look at the back of their neighbor's property. The lot, I believe, has already been cleared. Hmm. Oh, because the oh. blue goes including that uh, vegetation. Yeah, I don't. What? Yeah, I think we're looking at the shadows of the trees behind the, the stockade fence. Oh, yeah. They look. They when they step into their backyard today, they look right at that fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's casting a shadow. Well, maybe some people can't have a pool. I don't know. It's very tight and it's everything, every piece of land is used between that and the shed and the pool. It, uh, you got one corner and that's, and that's it. That's a lot of uh, house and stuff for going side to side from property line to property line. Well, it nearly does that today by virtue of the angle, but Again, this pool won't be visible from anywhere in terms of being out of. I mean, I can I can I can see trying to address concerns about the equipment, but the pool itself certainly won't impact uh, North Road. What kind of fence? It says a post and rail fence, and what kind of cover? What kind of fence are you going to have around the pool? Well, what not? None is required because of the auto cover. Uh, we've increased the beam size on the right-hand side to indicate the location of the, the auto cover, which negates the need for a fence. Again, I, I, I see the what, and then you have a post and rail fence uh, down to Jordan McCroby's property. Is that open? The lot to itself? Uh, no, it's partially vegetated, as I think is indicated on that locust plant now or that aerial. Uh, it's hard to. It's hard to this, see. There, there's a mix of vegetation on there. It's it's undeveloped. But it belongs to somebody, right? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, who did I miss? Has everyone spoken on this? Sort of lost track. Yep. I'm yep. always left. Except me. Um, because my view is it's not going to be visible um, from a public way. And as much as I, uh, you know, think it's a good, good policy to have noise abatement for the pool equipment, it's not our jurisdiction and it's fenced in, so we won't be looking at it. So that's my view. What would you guys like to do with this one? I think all we can do is approve it. It's based on what we can see. So I would say motion to approve with the usual screened at time oh. of inspection and in perpetuity. All right, okay, that's safe. Um, so that is Val's motion on that motion. Abby. I'm a nay because I don't even know what the vegetation is. So, I mean, I, I, I can't really responsibly Okay, this. So okay. I'm an a. All right. Diane? I see no veg protection of the vegetation on the uh, 120 wall. I don't know what it is. I, I see no stuff proposed, no vegetation proposed to, to hide it. It's wide open. Uh, there's actually all privet shown on that on that now. There's existing very mature privet on that right side now, and boxing in their current parking, which we've now shown to run along North Road. I see that, but I just it would be good to have where the vegetation is because if you okay. go out to get and that's there, there isn't any. No, it, I can tell you it's there. Oh, gosh. Guys, there is a motion on the table. You know, I'm trying to move things along. So the motion is to approve this. So, Diane, if you're not in favor. Hey, I just wanted to know about the. OK. All right. No. Val, why don't you speak to that, to the to the vegetation? I did view it. And it's, it, I can tell you, there is very mature hedges there between them and Mr. Bartlett. And I believe that's his hedge. 
So that will remain. And our caveat is that it will be screened at time of inspection and in perpetuity. So he has to do that. Right. Okay. So are you in fine. favor? Are you in favor of Val's yep. motion? Yep. yep, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh Carrie. I'm an I. You're I? I. I. Okay, wow. and I, I'm in favor of. So that's uh, four in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. Thank uh, you. Okay, next up, uh, 21 Hummock Pond Road. I have a request. If it's not this one, after this one, can we have just a five minute break? Sure. Because I think, you know, Stone Alley will be long and I need a five no, minute I'll, break. Listen, that's a great idea. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll review 19 and then we'll take a five minute break and reconvene, okay? Mm -hmm. I might need more than, if we're, we're gonna break, I might need more than five minutes. <laughs> no, I will, I gotta feed the dog and take it out. And you know, that takes about 10, 15, but. Uh, okay, so let's review 19. Do we have somebody here to represent this? Yes, hi. Pete Sennelbach here. Um, Sorry, could you spell your name for the record? Oh yeah, sure. Sorry, it's not in my window. Uh, S-E-N-D-E-L-B-A-C-H. Okay, very good. Oh, oh yeah, so you're you're the applicant, yeah. Yeah, it's my house. Okay, got Great. it, all right. Um, okay, so 21 Hummock Pond Road. Mm -hmm. Um, this this lot used to be the uh, the barnyard for Clara McGrady's hilltop stable, and mm -hmm. uh, this this picture here behind me is the view uh, from the late '40s of looking from the back fence okay. towards Milk Street Extension. Uh, sorry, what we're looking at is your uh, perspective view. Oh, okay. behind him. It's behind it's behind right. me here. Physically. No, but I mean I I'm looking at a screen. Right. I can't see you. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Um, it's for me. It's um, want it to be net zero, and uh, it's for my golden years. Okay. Um, well, I have quite a few questions here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So looks like you have a bunch of solar panels. On the yes. Roof, right? Yeah, and the whole thing is pretty much oriented to the solar south, and that's kind of the whole All right. program. What's the, what's the siding proposed? Uh, one by ten board and batten, natural to weather. Uh, okay. Um, what's the roof color? Black. Okay. Now that I know that all your solar panels are facing south, can we return to your site plan? Okay, so. I think the structure is on the site plan, the actual site plan. Um, okay. Yeah, there you go. So the solar panels face Hummock Pond Road. It looks like you have a garage in between this yeah, it's really in the middle of the block. It doesn't really, it's pretty invisible from Hunk Pond or Milk Street Extension. I'm going to make a suggestion here. Mm -hmm. Can we uh, can we view this with some height poles? I think that's a good idea. Um, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Um, I did tell Peter that he needed to uh, apply for the solar panels separately and remove it from the application. Okay, all right. So that simplifies things a little bit then. Yeah. So like if we remove that from the equation, we're looking at a building that has, uh, looks like uh, there's no muttons in the, in the um, windows. They're all, right. They're all casement windows. Um, the siding, I, there are certainly examples of that similar siding out there. How tall is it? Uh, I think it's 21 or 22 feet. Hang on a sec. 
Okay, so it's not that tall. No, I tried to keep it low. That's it's uh, 21 feet. 21 feet. Okay, can we scroll down a little, uh, down a little bit to see the other elevations? There we go. Yeah, 21. Is the garage staying? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you come out of Hussey Farm onto, um, yeah. There. Yeah, if you went straight across the street, you're going right in the driveway. Yeah. Right. So if the garage wasn't there, you would see right. You'd be looking all at that solar panels. Well, but okay, Carrie, so the solar panels are going to be applied for separately. Mm -hmm. so we're going to basically take the that off of the table for now. Okay. So what we're looking at is really the building itself, the roof, the walls, the siding, the windows and doors, that. Okay. Mr. Chair, we also received um, uh, comments from abutters. Okay, go. Can you read those okay. the record? So it's up on the screen. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm reading this to myself. Should I be reading this aloud? No, we can read it. Okay. Oh, mm hmm What what does this mean? A third variance? Yeah, I don't understand that either. It sounds like a zoning thing. It has that would have nothing to do with us. Okay. Oh oh, I see. I'm not sure if these are entirely HCC issues. Now, one of the issues that that he did bring up that that is an HCC issue is that of uh, the windows having no uh, muntins in them. Right. Um, which is, ge we generally don't approve that. Well, I, um, I don't like fake muntins. And I was hoping that since this was not visible from either Hummock Pond Road or Milk Street Extension, that it would be approvable. Well, so maybe if, if, uh, if your position is, is that it's invisible, Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe we're back to the idea of viewing this, which would, we would sort of kill two birds with one stone if we're anticipating that you're going to come back to us with uh, solar panels. So can we view this with some height poles? Sure. Let me make sure that my other board members are, are in sync with, with that observation. What do you guys think? So I, well, Val. I think that it's it. Hang on, Val. I think it's a good idea because the garage, I don't know the height of the garage, uh, that it would mitigate what will be the thing that we'd really not wanna see, which is the solar panels as this is right in back of that. And I would point out in one of these pictures that you can see the house in back of it, picture B, that must be a house that faces uh the mm -hmm. other street. Um, so I do think a view is a good idea. Okay. And um, I would also maybe ask the applicant to consider moving the house toward the west so that it is definitely not going to be seen. Oh, mm hmm. Indeed. Yeah, I don't mind doing oh, that. No, hold on, no back and forth. Um, okay, so good observation. Um, anyone else? I wonder how the driveway will access the house because you're going to have to get past the garage. Right, right. So you're going to have to do a little clearing of some of the vegetation around the garage. It looks like there's a lot of vegetation around it. That's right. So which side would you go, right, left? And then what does that open up in terms of view corridor? Okay.
Good point. Hussey Farm Road. You, anyone coming out of Hussey Farm is going to see straight down there. Right. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. Um, Abby. Yeah, I'm. I'm holding out for the view. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, I'm okay with the application if if it if it turns out that um, we we can't see it. I mean, and obviously it's not in our purview, but. Um, I think height poles and a view is essential. Okay, thanks, Diane. Yes, I do too. Yep. Okay, so why don't we uh, uh, have a motion on the table for a, a view with height poles at either end of the ridge? So moved. I make the motion. Oh, Abby just beat you to it. So with Abby, height poles. So. Diane? Yes. Abby made that motion. So are you in favor of the motion? Yep. Okay, thank you. Val? Yep. Carrie? Yes. Abby? Yes. I'm in favor. Okay, so um, we'll, um, we're going to get you on. So you'll be responsible for getting up some height poles. And what you want to do is is uh, put them up so that we can view them over the weekend and then phone that into the HEC office and talk to Kathy um, and just let her know that the polls are up and then she'll put you on the view list, okay? Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, now, um, so Val has proposed uh, very wisely that we have a little bit of a break. I don't want it to be too long because I want to keep the, the, the uh, meeting moving along. I want to at least get past our new business. Oh, 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 oh. Um, so it's 707, everybody. Okay. What so time? We're, we'll, we'll reconvene um, at 712. Okay. 713. Okay. Okay. 713. 713. Expect you all back. Thanks.
oh, that's what, well within the spectrum here. The kid has that um, the breathing and the crawling thing. And then another judge is going to say, well, she's not that handicapped. She knew what she was doing. She agreed to stay and watch the kid. I'm back. Thanks, Val. Um, Thank you for the break. <laughs> hope it was long enough. It wasn't, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. Oh, I got to put my video on. OK, there. Okay, so that was Carrie, right? Oh, God, this is Stone Alley. Is everybody back? I'm just checking to see if um, Carrie's if back. Carrie's back. Abby. I'm back. Diane's back. Diane's back. Val's back. Carrie's back. I'm back. I'm looking for Abby. She's walking the dog, I guess. <laughs> Okay, this is a potential problem because we're supposed to be moving forward on this application with five people. Right, we're short. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna text her, you know, cause we really can't wait too long. We might just have to wait. Um, Tori. You're probably muted. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, so you've been following. Uh, Abby might be out walking her dog. I heard, she yep. On a five-person board. And Correct. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who who on the in the queue here is, is on this application. But you're going to want to hold for five people, right? That was the whole point of this. Correct. So I'm going to text Abby and see, or actually, I might just call her and see how long. Is there an alternate? What? Is there an alternate? No, you, you have five people. That's it. Like, that's all we have tonight. Okay. That's what I was asking. Yeah. So um, let me see. Um, hold on. I'm going to mute for a second. I'll be right
Okay, folks, she's not picking up. So, do you want to do you want to move forward, and then when she returns, we'll go to five, right? I don't want everybody. No, she, has to be, she has to be present for the whole discussion. You well, know, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, do you want to go to the next applicant? Oh when, yeah, yeah. I mean, then we're not holding. But I was going to suggest. Yeah, yeah. So I think we need Abby. Um, and so what what we'll do is we'll hold for Abby for you guys, but then we can move forward with some of these other applications that are following it. Yeah. Um, Great. We should we should probably take a motion this of the members that are sitting right now um, to do that. So could motion to hold 20 and 21 until we have a five person. Great. Board. Thank you. Thank you very much. On that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you. Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. Thanks, guys. And thank if you. If Abby comes back, we'll, we'll get right back to you. Great. So thank you. Right now, right now, we're going to go to 22 Boulevard. I know Ben's on the queue. Hi, everybody. Hi, Ben. Okay. So Ben, I think you know who your board is, right? Um, not sure, but I, I, I'm okay uh, me, with anybody. Let Don't me just worry. tell you for the record, it's Diane, Val, Carrie Thornwell, and myself. Okay, okay. so let's go. So we're, uh, I'm applying for a new uh, second dwelling cottage in the very far back of this very long lot. Yes. Um, the, the building is probably 700 feet off the boulevard. Looks like, <clears throat> and um, as you'll see, it's a it's a cute little cottage. So, uh, okay. please keep scrolling and take a look. Now, if I were Val, mm -hmm. I would say, do we have photographs of the existing main house? It's in construction, and I did submit the elevations of the the approved other structure. If you just keep going. Okay. All right. there somewhere. All right. I, I gave you everything. Okay, here's the approved site plan. Mm -hmm. uh, the pool and everything. There's the main house. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Great. Keep going. You'll see the garage studio and a cabana as well. There's the garage. Okay. All this is cabana. Approved. Okay. So now we go back to your cute little structure, which is this, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, can we see the next page? Should we get the whole picture? All right. Very good. Um, board members. How high is it? Uh, if you go to the first sheet, it'll tell you. It'll be on there. Um, that dimension, I can't read it on my... Uh, scan there so let me tell you it is 23 feet okay <clears throat> i'll start if you want thanks diane that would be great okay the number one thing is every elevation has mold windows they should be not mold and they should be bigger though i can't it's so small on my screen i can't read the size but on the southwest elevation, which is the front door, the windows should be bigger and separated. The same with the uh, uh, on the southeast should be the same. Every window on there is mold. It is or the doors and the. What the northeast is the same thing. The windows downstairs on the first floor are smaller than the ones above them from your twos. They all call for twos, but they're mulled together and then the threes underneath. They should be big. The first floor, northeast elevation, the window. I don't know what it is, but it should be bigger. It, you've got so much space around each window. This is a little cottage, and it just needs to be 
simpler and separated instead of having all the meld windows. And I don't mind the twos on the northwest, I guess it is, elevation. Uh, but the other ones, the other three, I like the simplicity of the cottage. I like the height of it, but the windows need to be addressed. At least that's what I feel. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Um, Val? I think it's a sweet little cottage. I have a question for Ben. Sure. Um, ben, none of the other structures have like a gable porch. They all have a shed roof porch. Is there any reason you couldn't do a shed roof porch there? I think it would be kind of uh, ugly there. I think it would look a little cheesy. Uh, I'm trying to create a little bit more of a garden cottage here in the very far back. It just um, again, doesn't connect for me with everything else, but that yeah. was just a question. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to stress the location of this on the site plan. Um, I know, but in, there's going to be like what we're talking about here. Total, and I do think you'll see these buildings. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. It, it uh, is cute. Cute, cute, cute. Thank you. Carrie. Yeah, I think it's cute as well. I don't mind the ganged windows on the southeast elevation. Is that facing a road? Because that's the yeah. only one that seems to have a lot of windows to me. Uh, if it's yeah, facing... go, if we go to the site plan, you can see exactly where, where this thing is placed. Yeah. Well, it's kind of small. We can't see it. So you'll see the boulevard is, is at the far uh, southern yeah. And White Hart goes up about a, a half of this property. I don't know exactly where it ends. Probably around the cabana, maybe. Um, so, you know. Yeah, I'm familiar with White Hart. Um, yeah. And I agree that this building will probably never be seen. There is another property back there that's developed, isn't there? This is a place for two more properties. Oh, beyond. To be developed. Oh, I see. No, White Hart dead ends into a, a private property. Right. It's on the sides because White Hart uh, used yeah. to be 24 bar, uh, Boulevard. And you know, it's it, just it, a long property. And you could see it from Rainbow. You can see the stuff from Rainbow's End in there. But I don't think you could see this because there's a lot of vegetation between that and Rainbow End. Okay. So, Carrie, did you finish? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. I, it's it's I am small, too. it's cute. There's a couple of ganged windows, but they, they're, it's not bad. They're, you know, it's that one elevation. You could ungang a few of those, maybe on the first floor. So, Ben, yeah. listen, Carrie's fine with this. I'm fine with this. Are there a few things that you could do at the table to um, get us to approve this? Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to ungang those two second floor, the one in the dorm room, the one in the gable end, so that if you can see it over the brush. Ben, tell yeah. us which elevations. Uh, southeast elevation. Okay. I'm happy to ungang the, um, the the double window in the dormer. I mean, yeah, in the dormer and the double window in the gable. So Both. in case you can see it over the brush, you won't see them. Okay. Um, anything else? I mean, I'm happy to leave this open as old business because I do have other revisions that may need to come back for this building anyways. I just don't know the timing and process of that right now, but I'm in no rush to get I approval. Have, if I can open it, keep it open for old business, I can come okay, back. Look, I, I, if you're coming I, back anyway, I was just trying to move things off of our agenda, which is I can, horrible. I can go with the southeast elevation separating those windows. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So Ben is suggesting separating the windows in the gable end and also the, the two in the dormer. Right. No, would somebody care to make a motion and see how I make that a works? motion to approve through staff the separate 
the as proposed with the separation on the southeast elevation of the windows in the in the gable and in the shed dormer. Very good. Thank you for the motion, Diane. On that motion, Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Thank you. And we have one more, right, for you? Yep. Okay. Entertainment building. Hey, has, how, is Abby back? Oh, yeah, I'm here. All right, listen, we're going to um, just do this entertainment program to get rid of Ben. Uh, you can, well, now that you're here, you can sit on it, but then we're going to go back and do our cobblestone, uh, you know, cobblestone road. Stone Alley. Stone Alley, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm frazzled. Okay, uh, entertainment building, let's go. Yep, so um, this is gonna be an entertainment building uh, modeled into, as a kind of a carriage house barn. Um, and um, keep scrolling to see the elevations. Um, ah, hmm. It was all going so well until I saw that cupola. Yeah. Well, if the cupola is the problem, like I said, I'll be back for some revisions on these buildings. I'm happy to remove it for the time being, as long as you're willing to see a revised and much smaller cupola in the future. It's just not, well, it's we've just approved, a lot we've on one it's site. Rendered, it's just not rendered properly. Um, but I, I think than, that you'll find if it's if it's 12 inches shorter, it'll look perfect. Mm, no. no. Okay. It's too big. Uh, and, and the roof pitch is kind of kooky. Um, but does anyone have any other issues with this building? Well, <clears throat> fundamentally, in and of itself, in a large lot where there isn't six other structures, no. Um, I really don't know that this is all going to be invisible. I know you say that, Ben, and I want to believe it. it. It is a lot on one site. And could you flip places with this and put this at the far back with the cottage that you just brought in? I, I, I just think it's a lot. And the cupola is definitely a no for me. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not claiming that this building will be invisible from Whiteheart. Uh, I think the elevation we're looking at right now probably will be in some some fashion, probably as little as they can get with landscaping, but you will see some of it. Okay, thanks. At least and maybe this elevation too, uh, at least at an angle from Whiteheart. Mm -hmm. With the stairs and the decks and... Yeah, know. that's on the back. I, I, I don't think that's visible. But. Abby. Uh, I feel like I'm late to the party here. How many structures are on this site? As a main house, there's quite a few, probably six. Six, yep. But it's a it's a enormous lot, and the main house is set off the street, probably 250 feet. Um, so it's it's not all jammed together. This is a what, which one is lot. the um, one we're talking about? That one. That one. Yep. Um, I'm I'm. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not against the cupola. Um, I, I, the decking is, is sort of excessive. Could we look at the decking again? Sure. The, uh, the, the one where you see it like face on the elevation with the, with the deck, like um, this isn't so egregious, it's, it's that. Yeah. Northeast, well, you've got the basement thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, couldn't could 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 you simplify that? Um, I would be okay with this if you simplified the the staircases and the um, the cupola to not be so tall. It needs to be a little more in proportion with the rest of the massing, and sure. I think I'd be okay with it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Diane. Oh. I th the cupola 
to me is not uh, what should be there. The shape of it, the the picture of the of the roof, if it's going to stay in any way, it, it needs to be made smaller and reduced, and all that jazz. The John McLaughlin would be having a fit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's, it's so busy. It's busy on the northeast side. And, and that is a side that I have mentioned before. And you can go and see it. You go up Rainbow Lane. You can, it looks right over to this driveway. Because I sat on the first house that went on White Hart a long time ago when it was just a driveway. So it isn't totally indivisible. It's a two-story building with a cupola on top. Uh, whoever's idea was to switch it, uh, I don't know that it's going to take it out of the view anymore. We should stake it and take a view of it and see what can be seen from both the boulevard and, and uh, Rainbow End, which is a public street may come to a dead end, but it's a public street. Same way as White Hart is. Right. That's what my suggestion would be. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, Carrie. Um, I think the rear with all the decking is a little busy as well. I just wonder if you can work the stair in a different way or just get rid of it and only get out to that deck from the second floor inside. I don't know, maybe that changes the program too much for you. The cupola does look funny. And then the little shed mass on the left, that seems a little bit dwarfed to me. I think if it were a little bit more significant in height, it would proportionately read a little better. Um, for the overall sort of massing of that piece with the rest of the building. Um, I don't, I'm not against a cupola, but the, the glass in that seems very strange and it does look like it's drawn with a too low of a pitch roof and needs some detailing of some sort. Okay, thanks. All right, Ben, I think you, uh, you know what uh, the consensus view is. So can I have a motion? Motion to hold for revisions. Mm, and, Do you uh, want ridge poles? Yeah, so Diane had mentioned ridge poles. You want to? Yes, and ridge poles. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, very good. So that's uh, Val's motion on that motion. Abby. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Aye. Gary. Aye. Abby. Aye again. I? <laughs> no. And Oh, well, I'm sorry, Val, you made the motion, right? Yeah, yeah. sorry, Val. Um, and I'm in favor, so that motion carries. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks. And all right, so now we're going to go back to... Um, how come my agenda is all messed up here? My printer wouldn't print my agenda today. Oh. What uh, happened to Stone Alley? No, no. Coming we're, back we're now. Waiting for you, so we're we're on it now. Oh, I'm sorry. I. No, that's that's going, okay. Okay, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean no to. No problem. Up. Okay, so here we all are. Now, uh, <coughs> so we're gonna have. I let me see if I can figure out who's gonna be speaking here. Um, Chris. Tori, um, now they can. Sorry, I'm just going to have to. We're going to hear from. Uh, Tori first, I guess, and Chris, if he wants to. Then I want to hear from, we have HSAB on this, right, Holly? Yes, sir, we do. 
Okay, we'll hear from HSAB. And then I thought I saw Sarah on, I don't see her now, but uh, whoever is, whoever else is gonna speak on this. I'm here, I'm here. You probably just can't see me. Okay, so Sarah, um, who else should I write down to, to recognize to speak? Well, definitely me. Yeah. Um, my client, Ginger Andrews, if she's on. I didn't see her either. Mr. Chair, I believe she's a phone number, 1325. Some, okay. okay, so Sarah, Ginger, anyone else? Jay Maroney, if he's on, or okay. Stephen Cohen. Oh. Maroney, okay. And uh, I don't know if Linda Williams is on or not. I didn't see her either. Mr. Chair, Nina King, I believe, is speaking again. That Nina King? Yeah. Okay. And then there's another phone number. I don't know who it's for. 914-471-1111. There's no name attached. So. Well, Mr. Chair, um, can we confirm that I'm on this? I, I haven't been on it in like three years. It's a new application. Yeah. Okay. That's what I figured. Okay. Um, okay. So, Tori, you go first. Mr. Chair, can I just confirm? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, no, no, no problem at all. No yeah. problem at all. I just wanted to confirm um, you, you were just saying um, uh, sort of. Uh, the, the way that you'd like to run the, the situation. I'd like yeah. to confirm that I speak after um, the abutters, if that's okay with you. Okay. Thank you. I will do that. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, all right. So, Tori, you want to go first? Sure. Okay. So, we've put together this PowerPoint to kind of summarize the last three years that everyone's been talking about. Mm -hmm and relative information towards the design and the neighborhood and our butters, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I see that Holly has that up first, if we wanna go through page by page on that. Chris, did you wanna read something first or do you wanna do this? I'll read that at the end. Okay, got it, okay. So this submission represents extensive alterations that we believe address the core of the HGC's feedback. Moving the home to the south. Do we need to address that phone call? I, Ray? Don't, know, I don't know who that okay. is. Okay. It's not you, right, Tori? No, it's not me. Whoever it is, mute, please. Okay, continue. Okay. This submission represents extensive alterations that we believe address the core of the HDC's feedback. Moving the home to the south and away from Stone Alley, ensuring the addition's heights are appropriate, reducing the sunroom size to utilize only existing windows, enhancing additive massing, massing excuse me, and creating an attractive planting hardscape area adjacent to Stone Alley and to the east. We appreciate the HDC's continued oversight of our project, and we hope this proposal meets with your approval. The following section addresses the HDC minutes from our last meeting. So these were the core feedback points in the minutes from January 20th meeting. And as you can see, the, verb the verbiage on the left is exactly what was in the minutes and the answers are on the right as to being addressed or otherwise. And I'll let you guys read that for a minute. Move the structure south and away from Stone Alley. Yes. Maximum ridge height on one side, measured four feet away from the wall at the easternmost point of the property, exceeds the allowed zoning height on the north and south side. I know we discussed Zoning really wasn't your program, but we have addressed it. Covered porch corners and trim details need to replicate the existing porch exactly. We've done that. The proportion of window height to the wall is different, approximately three versus one on the existing. We've included photos and dimensions on the plans to show you that that's been addressed. Porch window bays should be reduced by at least two windows. 
which pulls the porch addition away from Stone Alley by making it narrower. We've done that. Lining up the second floor windows on that deck above the sunroom porch isn't gonna work construction wise. And we can talk about that when we look at that elevation. On the south elevation, the height of the secondary gable needs to read as purely secondary to the main structure. We feel it does. So as to point A, we've moved south off of Stone Alley as you requested. I don't know if we wanna go back and forth, Holly, to the references or if we just wanna read through this first, what, what would you all prefer? Well, yeah, I think we should read through this. Okay. And then just show us okay. So we've moved again off, uh, the house has again been moved south off of Stone Alley as the HCC has requested. You can see that on the site plan. Now, when compared to the direct neighbors, this addition is actually the furthest off of Stone Alley. You'll see that in slide 15. And the addition closely follows the historic precedence, precedence um, which we've referenced in slides 21 to 29. As far as the maximum ridge height, we've updated the, updated the drawings to better reflect the north wall wrapping around to the east side of the house at the existing grade, which brings all ridge heights within guidelines. The average height of the house remains below average height of the neighboring properties and in keeping with the neighborhood. Okay. Here's a photo of that area that we were discussing. There was a discrepancy in the drawings prior with the covered porch corners and trim details need to replicate the existing exactly. We've corrected the drawings to reflect this photo here. Okay. There's another photo where you can see that discrepancy that was mentioned in the meeting minutes from January of the three versus one, et cetera. So we've corrected the drawings to reflect what you see here. So we've reduced the porch window count by two windows so that the porch repurposes existing windows only to meet the HDC's request. The window reduction has once again reduced the structure's east fenestration East fenestration is in keeping with the neighborhood. And we've taken aerial photos of um, views from Union Street of east elevations up and down the road. On the south elevation, the height of the secondary gable needs to read as purely secondary to the main structure. These revised drawings better represent the details of the secondary gable, which shows that it is secondary to the main structure. So this GIS map shows you obviously the location of all of our butters and two stone alley. You can see in our first section, these are neighbors that directly abut two stone alley. The next group neighbors whose homes are on and abut stone alley itself. And then the last one are homes that can be seen from Union Street. The, this proposal represents a home sized and designed in a similar manner to those around us. In fact, the following exhibits depict how, relative to our neighbors, our latest structure is now essentially the same or materially underutilizing the setback off Stone Alley, roof heights, building length, lot coverage, and east elevation fenestration. So these are numbers for you to compare and contrast of us versus our Stone Alley direct abutters. Roof heights, again, homes surrounding us and Stone Alley. The average of each for your reference 
building links into the lot. Lot coverage, again, an average. In this submission, we've included photos of the neighborhood's east facades as viewed from Union Street, which shows our east facing fenestration is in keeping with the neighborhood. So these are historical pre precedents that has been presented before, but we've again created a uh, offering that summarizes everyone's information into a complete um, package for you. So in this historical photo, proposed addition in 2020 includes unchanged historical west facade. And besides the fence not being there anymore, none of this will change what you're looking at right now. Viewed from Orange Street, the addition will be obscured by this unchanged existing west facade. The existing dwelling historically sits an average of two to three feet off of Stone Alley in this photo. This is from NHA archives, it's the town clock. And again, we propose that the proposed addition in 2020, the historical view remains uninterrupted. In this photo, you can see two stone alley on the left, 10 Orange Street at the top on the right, one and three technically, but it's categorized as one stone alley as far as our mapping purposes on the bottom right. This is circa 1910s. The two stone alley fence historically sits an average of four feet off the alley. 10 Orange Street is built out directly to the property line on the alley. One stone alley fence historically sits an average of two feet off the alley. Here we have two stone alley again on the left. This is circa 1928. 10 Orange Street on the right, one Stone Alley on the right, top and bottom, res uh, respectfully. Two Stone Alley fence and trees right on the alley. 10 Orange Street built directly to the property line with stone retaining walls and a board fencing on top of the wall, rising an average of eight feet plus above grade at the alleyway. One Stone Alley historically averaging five to six feet off the alley. This next photo is looking east towards the harbor, circa 1928, 10 Orange Street is on the left, two stone alleys on the right, 10 Orange Street walls with the fence directly on the alleyway. Again, historically an average of eight feet plus in heights, one stone alley, a three-story structure shown on the bottom left beyond the fence. Two stone alley again, now we're looking west, circa 1930s. We've got two stone alley fence with landscaping historically matches the existing and proposed 2020 vegetation. 10 Orange Street built to the property line, walls, fencing, heights as previously mentioned. Two stone alley, 10 Orange Street, one stone alley, circa 1950s. Two stone alley fence and vegetation historically averaging four to six feet off the alley. 10 Orange Street built to the property line, walls, fencing, vegetation, heights. One stone alley historically averaging six to eight feet off the alley here. Two stone alley, 10 Orange Street, circa 1960s. Two stone alley fence and dwelling historically average four to six feet off of the alley. 10 Orange Street, built to the property line, walls, fencing, vegetation heights. These are aerial views of the east facades as viewed from Union Street. This is one and three Stone Alley, their sunroom. This is two Stone Alley with 12 Orange and 10 Orange. You can see how deep 10 Orange goes into the lot very clearly here. This is 12 Orange Street.
14 Orange Street, again, using full length of the lot. This is 16 Orange Street, vegetation, decks, fenestration. 18 Orange Street, triple decks, so to speak, two sunroom on top of sunroom, plus a third story deck on top of that, fenestration. 20 Orange Street, one of the more modest depths into the lot, but plenty of vegetation, plenty of fenestration, three stories. This is 22 Orange Street, using the full length of the lot right up to the edge of the bluff looking down to Union Street. 26 Orange Street, three stories, double decks. 28 Orange Street, again, three stories, sunroom on top of a full deck using right to the bluff edge. 32 Orange Street, very um, significant fenestration, two stories, deck on top of a sunroom, right to the edge of the bluff. 34 Orange Street, similar to the other comments. And I believe that's the end, yeah, Holly? Okay. We'd like to, um, you know, when we left off in January, we were at a point where we completely honor all of the abutters' responses, comments, letters, et cetera. And our experience was that the HDC felt that they were more than happy to continue to hear any abutters' comments or responses, feelings in writing, and would acknowledge all and take all into consideration. But we were at a point where we really wanted to discuss and have the board focus on the design. So our hopes are that we can really, you know, hear what everyone has to say, but keep the board focused on the design this evening. Okay. Um, so are you going to present? Sure. That next. So I guess we should start with the site plan, Holly, if you don't mind, go back one more time. This is where you can see that the sunroom is 12 feet off the actual paper road line of Stone Alley. And then all of the distances, I don't know if you can zoom in um, or if you guys have been able to look at this closer in your own time, um, but all the distances are noted and relative. And this creates a situation where literally we've got the farthest distance off of Stone Alley at the rear most point of our addition. And the grade is also something to make note of. The topographic map was directly taken from the surveyor's plan. All of those are noted on this and we can discuss those as you guys review. So here on the east elevation, we, discuss, we discussed in our presentation that we couldn't line up the second floor windows and doors and are open to your um, input on that, but we've reduced the sunroom size. We're using only existing windows that are refurbished. Um, we've dialed in all of the trim details, all of the uh, situations that you mentioned in your minutes from January as far as the trim between the bottom of the second floor deck and the top of the sunroom. And um, I believe we've addressed your concerns at that point. We've got revision notes on the right that can more clearly uh, decipher that. We've also cleaned up all of the um, roof lines, the dormers, the corner boards, all of that that was an issue prior. Uh, Holly. Can you zoom in? I can't read the vertical dimension. No, keep could go down. Now go to the right. 
32.6, and that is? That's to the, I believe the original height of the existing structure down to the brick path that meets Stone Alley. Mm -hmm. 32 feet, six inches. Okay, thank you. Here we are working with existing grade. We have incorporated the retaining walls to match the existing retaining wall in front of the existing structure. Um, again, as many heights and roof pitches and everything else that we can include for you. We have um, matched the way the dormer lines up on the existing building in the lower addition of the secondary structure, so to speak after the connector piece. And I believe it's a four foot difference total from the top of the ridge height to the top of the additions ridge height, the main body of the additions ridge height. Holly, could you zoom in on that dimension there? 32 feet, okay. Yep, got it, thank you. Oh, three foot two, excuse me, not four feet from the original existing ridge height to the additions main ridge height. Okay. Here, um, we really are working with existing grade. There's numerous photos that show the depth of the topography and how it changes at that back eastern end. So um, I believe Mirka can speak more to that when we discuss the landscaping plan if we get to that. But I believe the maximum distance, Holly, if you can zoom in a little bit, I believe the maximum distance of that first retaining wall on the south, right at where the grade starts to change. So that's the maximum of grade infill there, two six, I believe that says. Other than that, you can see it's very minimal that we're changing any topography or grade. Okay. And then I believe we go to the floor plans for reference. There's a roof plan. Distances everywhere we could. And there's a corrected roof plan, dormer everything in alignment with um, issues that you had mentioned in prior minutes. Okay. And I believe, unless Chris wants to add anything. Chris? Uh, I'd like to um, retain the right to speak after the uh, about as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now I'd like to hear from HSAB through Holly. Sir, they met on the 28th and overall comments were uh, out of scale and feels like abuse of process. Same proposal we've seen inappropriate, lower the back wing, still inappropriate. They recommended denial due to the lack of response due to concerns expressed in insignificant changes. All pre previous comments should be included. Those were their comments. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now um, I'll start with Sarah, if you're ready. Are you muted? Sarah I, Alger? But I am not now. There you go. Um, well, first, I guess, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I'm here on behalf of Ginger Andrews. And as you know, this has been a three-year process. And I think if the applicant's going to be referring to prior minutes and relying on responses to concerns that were raised in prior meetings, that we need to incorporate the entire record 
from those past um, presentations and those past files into this file. Otherwise, there's no context for any of those comments. Correct. Um, that would include, of course, bringing forward the extensive historical documentation that the abutters have put together and have placed in the record. Um, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I completely agree with what um, Historic Structures is saying. Um, I think the applicants have really missed the point in their presentation. I, I really don't know why we were taken down that tour of Orange Street. I, I don't really see how that has any application to a new, basically a new structure being added on to the back of what is a historical structure, um, changing the character of, to, of Stone Alley pretty much irreparably the way that they're proposing it, um, blocking out all the sun and light, changing the very way that people will experience Stone Alley coming up from Union Street and going down from Orange Street. <clears throat> um, building so close and not doing as the HTC previously suggested, which was bringing all of the construction south, not just pulling the building a couple of feet off Stone Alley to the south. I, I don't think that's what the Historic District Commission was saying when it asked um, the applicant to build toward the south. I think you were asking that this not telescope down the hill, that it not use up um, its entire length of lot, that it not create a wall of structure along Stone Alley, um, but instead that it have some additive massing up along the top, along where the existing building is and to the south. Um, for whatever reason, the applicants have chosen to ignore that comment time and time again, and I'm not really sure why it isn't addressed in their presentation, but what they're proposing isn't, isn't appropriate. It's overwhelming the way, it's overwhelming the historic structure. Um, this structure was designed um, and I guess if Ginger's on, I'll let her go into the history of the design, but um, it was a barn. It was then designed to become a house. It's one of the last remaining um, houses by this designer, I believe her name was Eliza Codd. I think it's important for us to recognize those structures and to keep them. And if we allow this kind of addition telescoping down the hill, we're not going, we're not going to be able to see that. Um, it's going to completely obliterate and overwhelm that structure. So I, I would say what they're proposing is inappropriate. It's not responsive to what HSAB and this very commission have been saying for the last three years. Um, and I, I think it should be denied. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Ginger, are you there? You may be muted. Oh, ah, can you hear me now? You're on. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to make a comment on the way the previous, before I explain a little bit about more why uh, the structure should be um, retained in its current form, uh, that um, Mr. Skakel uh, always gets to make a second presentation after the abutters, and I, I don't think that's really fair to us. Uh, so I'm not actually asking for a denial uh, because of the fact that it's a new hearing. I think that it would be very important to incorporate the rest of the records before um, uh, the, um, uh, the board really discusses it that much because the uh, um, those records are important, but just to, uh, and, I, and I take issues with some of the measurements that have been um, uh, delineated in the um, PowerPoint. So um, just briefly, um, Two Stone Alley is a conversion uh, of a barn, St uh, Levi Starbucks barn, 
which you can see the footprint has not changed on the Sanborn maps for um, many years. And um, Eliza Codd was a MIT trained architect and this was her house. So although she designed big houses in and some of them in the neighborhood for her clients, this is what he, she chose for herself. And it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's a really interesting building and it's very unique, not only in that it's a conversion, which at the time I would say was probably a shocking idea to that anyone would want to live in a barn, but, um, but it also has a particular wit in that um, she retained some of those barn elements uh, in the uh, east elevation and the north elevation. And you can see the small door on the north side, uh, which is ba basically the only original feature that um, that they've uh, included on the north side. It has a red dot on it. I'm not sure why. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, where am I here? The... Uh, 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 be because it's an agricultural building and a and a, a, a dwelling, it 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 shows the wit and humor of an important architect. And the uh, in the east side, you can actually see in its relationship to the um, to the hill to Quantity Bank, which was um, which was dug out uh, in order to fill Union Street and make Union Street. Uh, uh, a, a, a residential street rather than a dump, which is what it was, um, that uh, the, the proposed building uh, is, is basically, um, uh, it'll have to be, it'll be more like a, like a cliff, cliff dwelling there. I mean, usually you at the HDC don't deal with this kind of um, steep bank issue because most of the steep banks on the island are next to wetlands, so it's a concom issue. But it doesn't um, uh, fit any of the um, pre-existing uh, practices where, as, um, for example, my house expanded, it did so uh, in uh, lower um, additions um, to the uh, east and west and uh, much lower on the north side over the course of about 300 years so that it's much uh, softer. And it is, in fact, my house is not a full three stories. It is a two and a half, which I believe you can read in, um, if it's not building with Nantucket in mind, it's one of uh, those other uh, books. And then the, um, the setbacks are uh, clear if you look at the Sanborn maps that the, the uh, applicant has not drawn uh, its, build, its wall of building uh, anywhere near off the actual uh, uh, layout of the alley. If you, if you, um, the, the Sanborn map hasn't really changed and the town has not yet taken Stone Alley so that those lines are not um, reflecting current reality. Um, so one stone alley is actually, there's a, there's an old curb, um, probably dating from 1720 when the house was either built or put there that show that my, uh, house is, um, the taller portions of it are between 16 and, uh, 11 something off of the curb. And the, uh, the grass has, has been typical of the alley through the years. It, given it's part of its rural character. So um, I can, I can um, address some of those other things point by point uh, by, um, uh, um, yeah, I, I will do that in the letter. But I think uh, that uh, until some of the, you know, you know the technical uh, question of the rest of the record is, is addressed, um, that, um, uh, you should either hold for revisions or hold for further information. Okay, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it. The Orange Street stuff is irrelevant because that's on the top of Quantity Bluff. This is halfway down, as is my house. Uh, it's overwhelming to the original house. And um, the, uh, the existing grades, um, I'm not sure, are totally accurate. There's uh, 
the vegetation has grown in in a way that may be um, uh, confusing to the to the lasers or whatever they were measuring with. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, well, so I have. Thank you, Ginger. I have Jay Maroney down on the list. Is he is he on? Uh, Jay, you may be muted if you can hear me. All right, let's go back to that. How about Nina King? Okay, let's put it this way. Anyone else who wants to speak in opposition to this should unmute and shout out. Uh, I'm here. Oh, there you go. Okay. Sorry, Sorry I had to unmute. Um, we are the abutters at 14 and a half orange. That's the only property that um, was not shown as uh, described when, when we were taking that tour through the Orange Street Bluff. And uh, we are actually right next to this property. And even though it's moved away from Stone Alley, which we would agree with, uh, it's obviously moving right next to us. But mostly it's a shame that these kind of quirky structures that have been in place for all these years that give the character to our island are being replaced with, I can't think of any other way to put it, but a, a ski chalet. And yes, uh, they maybe reduced the, you know, the height of some of the stuff and it's, you know, maybe a little bit smaller, doesn't really look like that, but it's literally tumbling down Stone Alley and covering, <laughs> covering the entire space. So it belongs in the Hamptons. Not next to, not not here, and I just throw that out there. Okay, thank you, Nina. Um, so, is Jay on, or should I? Anyone else, unmute. If not, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Chris uh, up for a short rebuttal. I promised him that. Chris. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Ray. I'm just going to read a letter. Um, just that it says, thank you very much for the opportunity to present our latest revisions to the HDC. As we enter our third year before the HDC, we reiterate our great respect for the work the HDC is doing. Today, we are once again submitting significant changes that we believe satisfies, satisfy the HDC's requests we hope these changes result in the HDC approving our project. The highlights of our design alterations are as follows. We are once again moving the additions north wall to the south and away from Stone Alley. The addition Stone Alley setback is now greater than most homes that line the alley. Exactly. Our proposal again reduces the square footage of the entire addition reducing the home sizes and enhancing the additive massing. We have made the sun porch much smaller and we are utilizing the sunroom windows as requested by the HTC. Our extensive hardscape design works with the historic precedent set. These and other changes in this proposal are good faith efforts to deliver the HTC a design that is consistent with the neighborhood and the requests of the HTC. We are disheartened to hear our neighbors hired lawyers and consultants falsely assert at every opportunity that our design has not dramatically changed over time. This is simply not true. The latest set of changes respond directly to the HDC's input and represent significant design concessions on the applicant's part. Finally, we continue to support this three-year HDC process we only wish to continue focusing on how our home's latest design is in keeping more than ever with its neighboring properties. And we ha are happy to answer any questions the board may have. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chris. Um, I did notice uh, that Jay Maroney has just joined us. Jay, if you can hear me, you should unmute. Um, uh, and I will hear, uh, I'd like you to keep it brief because I want to hear from the board members on this. But if you have anything to say, do it now, please. Thanks, right. I, I think that, I mean, our comments really remain the same. I mean, yes, they've made some changes. 
um, but the, the proposed project still dwarfs over uh, our client's house. It extends straight out. It doesn't go off to the okay. east. It's been requested numerous times. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, could you just state for the record who you represent again? I'm sorry. Of, of course, uh, the Crosby's down on okay. Union Street. Thank you. Um, and so it's been, it's three years of doing this over and over again. Um, and it's, it's been, it's just, it's endless. Uh, it's an obvious attempt just to browbeat us into submission. And, and we respectfully request finally that this be denied uh, in its entirety. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Okay, I did notice Steve Cohen just got on. Steve, if you can hear me, I'll recognize you, but please keep it brief. Hey, uh, Ray, thank you. Um, uh, I will keep it very brief. Thanks. This project has been told for, I don't know, two years now that going down the hill in a big massing is not going to be approved or is not the appropriate way to do this project. And they keep coming back, changing the fringe um, and keep going all the way down the hill. It's, it's a, you know, I, I will not repeat everything we've said, but they have not listened to the HTC's, you know, very clear directions on uh, two dozen occasions. And at this point, the HTC should just deny for uh, an unapprovable application. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Ray right. here. What? I have one other public comment, if that's okay. All right. This came in from somebody who was waiting for last week um, that they put on the chat. This is from uh, Karen Mira. She's at 10 Orange Street. Hmm. Proposed construction will create a structure that is totally out of character with the homes in the neighborhood. In addition, the new built space adjacent to Charming and Historic Cobblestone Alley will create more traffic and in inadequate parking on what is traditionally a walking route to Union Street. The view of the church from the harbor will be impacted. Good point. Uh, it has a small water view, an angle across Stone Alley, which would be completely obliterated by the construction that is proposed by Toon Stone Alley. Any additional expansion of the building will take away our view of the harbor completely and the little cottage is historic and already over exceeds its space for cars and certainly for trucks. This construction will detract from the historic neighborhood and will be a nuisance to my own historic house. Thanks, Karen. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Ray, I just have a question. Who's who's speaking? Tori, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, will there be a point after you guys review or whether you want to hear it now where I answer some of the concerns of the abutters? Oh, no. 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 I, I, I want to. We listen to the concerns of the abutters. That's our input. It's their right to do so, but I'm yeah. really gonna turn it over to the board right now because okay. the, those, the board members are actually the people that you should be concerned about our opinions on. Absolutely. Um, okay, so listen, um, I know for, for certain that at least three of the members, myself included, have been on this uh, you know, more or less constantly. So. I'm going to hear, I'd like to hear from Val, who is one of the other members who's been sort of consistent on this. Val, are you ready to um, speak on this application? Are you muted? I sorry. Oh, there you go. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, I do appreciate the evolution this structure has taken from its beginning. Um, I have this huge folder of <laughs> millions of pages and from the first plan that came in to now is significantly different and I do appreciate that. However, um, and thank you Tori for the um, PowerPoint. That's also very helpful. Uh, what it occurs to me is a couple of things. Um, that the examples you give us are, while true, are have a couple of things that are dissimilar from your application. Um, first, um, 
with the exception of a few structures that are actually on Stone Alley, the, the buildings that we have that you showed, while your point is well taken, they trail back on their lots. They're not on an alley or a way or a street. Um, so that's that's one thing. Second um, is that what's working against, and those houses are large houses with massing that trails back. Again, what's work, you're, you're at a disadvantage because you have a very small structure to start with. And so um, while you finesse the design to the point that it's at, I still think that the, uh, it, it's not um, there yet. Um, what would go a long way, in my opinion, is to make the north elevation very simple. That way, it it doesn't compete at all with the historic structure. And let's face it, that is really the the side that is the most um, visible it? and probably has the most comments on it. For instance, um, the connector piece, the connector. I think um, needs to not have this blank second floor wall that really should have windows like it does on the other side. But I think in this particular case, and I looked at your floor plan, that's only um, closets and you know closets don't have to be full height. That could be a very low sweeping, um, almost give it a one story element. So eliminate that and change that roof pitch. I would eliminate the dormer yeah. on this side, um, on the front mass, if you can, and also eliminate the dormer that the connector connects to on the rear mass. That way it's a very simple facade, much simpler. Um, and, and less to compete with uh, the historic structure that's there. Um, the setbacks, I appreciate the, the work toward pushing them back. Maybe if this side becomes a little quieter, the setbacks won't be as much of a concern, but anything you could do to push that away from the street is certainly going to only help yourself in the end. Um, I appreciate the reuse of the windows on the sunroom and the details, that's that's all good. Um, the rear, which is I guess the east, still I think needs some finessing. I think that maybe take a nod from the building that's there and keep the sunroom over. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the east. Can you say that one more time, Val? What was that? The, the, I'm looking at the east elevation now. Yep. Um, in your um, iteration here, the the sunroom has bumped over. Go back, go back as far as you can to where it is in its original position, which okay. will do a couple of things. It will move it again away from the street. And it seems right now, and I could be reading this or misreading this, but it looks almost like a bridge right now. To the left? It, that's like some open it's, space under there. It, it's a, well, it goes down into an outdoor shower and an entrance to the basement. Yeah, I think, um, kind of look at that area. I would okay. try to do something a little different there. And um, again, on the uh, south, I would eliminate, you know, this, this application of the double dormers to keep this, this piece down yeah. is, is a good idea in theory, but it's a more modern sort of look. And we're in the heart of the historic part of town and this is a historic structure. So I think to get rid of those, at least going in both directions is only gonna help this, this design. It's, it's just not really working. That whole area needs to be simple, simple, simple. Um, and what else? I wrote down all my thoughts here. <laughs> um, I think for now, that's all I have. 
um, I think you just need to keep moving in the direction, Back up the you know, away from the street and make everything simple. Thank you very much. That's it, Mr. Chair, for now. Yeah, that, that was great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Diane, you were also have been continuous on this, uh, so I'd like to hear from you. Yes, <clears throat> I think one of the things I have a list of 100 notes <clears throat> that we have requested over the time and uh, going down to <clears throat> the, I'm still concerned about the length of the east to the west uh, extension and the east height has still not dropped very much. We, we have asked continually to have the building edged towards the south rather than coming down the bluff to Union Street. This has not been done. We continue to get the same thing. I was sitting looking at these plans tonight where you were all talking and I was wondering what the square footage of the of the old building and the square footage of the new building was because it it looks to me as what I go by is that the new building is much larger than the existing building. The we are required to maintain our historic values and houses and areas and this is not it's the main building is lost compared to the other parts of it and this is a building of a Nantucket woman architect as you all but now know of the, the cards and the family and as such should be respected for her architecture work. That's this was her building and going down uh, Orange Street, which we were shown 14 and another building was her building. And we're taking it and, and changing every aspect of it. I tried to understand, I would have asked for that. The south elevation. Could I see the south elevation, please? Hit it, girl. All the lines coming down. I see the two existing walls. What is all the rest of it? Is that the, what is happening to the property? Yes. Uh, on redoing the, the landscape? I see trees going down there. What, What is the drop between where the building is and the end of the proposed south elevation? I, I don't what see the, what... What was the question, Diane? What is the elevation of the bottom of the land or on the south of elevation? The um, I believe you'd, yeah, have, you'd have to look at the actual elevated? plot plan. You'd have to look at the plot plan, Diane. You'd have to look at the plot plan. Oh. The site plan is what I was going to say. Yeah, it notes that for Diane. I just was trying to find out what the elevation was down at the bottom. Yeah. Where it comes at, at the very bottom. Property Diane? comes to an end. Yeah. Uh, elevation 22, more or less. And what's What's the elevation at the top? At the top? 40 or 30, yeah. 42. 40. 42. So it's approximately 20 feet that that needs to come down. Yeah. I, I understand the view would be magnif magnificent from uh, the east going out over the harbor, but you're going down a bank, which is not buildable, shouldn't be built on, and your sun porch and deck is there rather than going around the corner, which you have been asked to do. 
because you want the view. We are not interested in your view. We are interested in preserving the building, the, the little uh, area between the two gables are are denoting the separation of the houses. It shouldn't be there. This is an old house and should come down. The second part, the new part should be dropped lower. And on one of the elevations is a yellow line, which I can't figure out what it is. Uh, Where's the yellow is, line? Yeah, what's the yellow line pointing to? Holly, I'm asking you... where is it? Holly. Sir. Can you scroll up to see the other elevations? Oh, that's the side. Oh. Try the, try the west. Oh, oh that yellow line. Right? Yeah. What and is There it is. It's in the uh, north elevation. What is that yellow line? Doesn't that denote the ridge height? The it's noting the ridge height the of the addition versus the main existing dwelling. All right, the well, additive that... massive is three and a half feet less than the original building. Three, three feet two, feet yeah. two inches. All right, well, it's... That's what the yellow line is. The, the, the break between the two buildings should come together. The windows should be, although they, the red dots mean that they are existing and are staying in that position. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well, the building is too big. It needs to come down. It's on the street and I don't care if they own four acres of land. It is too big for the area and should be brought in considerably. I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to do it because I'm not <laughs> an architect. <laughs> Having spent five years in the BAC, I, I'm not dumb, but I'm a good designer and this is not a design that should be on this particular street. It should be a house that melds in with the old house of the Cods and, and improves Stone Alley, not detrimental to it. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Abby. I, um, I'm not new to this, but I, I... I haven't been, I don't have the history right. of the of Val and Diane. So, um, but uh, having listened to both sides, uh, I feel that uh, Two Stone Alley is a very difficult site to expand on um, given its steep terrain and its his historic significance. Um, I feel that the North Elevation overshadows the alley, which I think is, is a very important site in itself. So expanding to this extent changes the alley dramatically. I would suggest uh, sticking with the footprint you have now. There's, you have a deck going out towards the harbor and that's established. I would work within those limits. Um, I think over manipulating the landscape with that steepness is, is just going to look just that, manipulated. And I think surrounding the site with Leyland Cypress is, is also in, inappropriate, um, but we haven't gotten to the landscape. So um, Mr. Chair, those are my my first and initial thoughts. Thank you very much, Abby. Carrie. Um, I am new to this project. Yes. I'm, I'm simply finding it interesting that the addition is mimicking the existing historic structure when it should be giving deference to that historic structure rather than trying to mimic it. But I also see that in mimicking it, it's not very successful. It's very balanced. In this case, I think the balance of the windows on the north and the south elevations 
it's it doesn't it doesn't work somehow because the existing building is so unique and the windows are not balancing that all the balance of this addition creates something that's not appropriate i think the fact that it's it feels like it's hanging over the ledge and that just seems precarious the east elevation is also a mimicking of the existing east elevation just on a tiny bit of a smaller scale the dormers are very close to the ends of the additions on that second floor the sunroom does seem too centered too formal too big um on the south can we look at the south there was something um this is going yeah those there. dormers just mm -hmm. seem so massive on that addition. I think we've got three. Now. Um, and again, I think the addition needs to give deference to the existing building rather than mimic it in a way that I don't find that successful. All the centering of the doors and all that. Yeah, it looks like a campus. Um, I think that's all I have to say right now. Great. Thanks very much, Carrie. Um, so I share a lot of those concerns, have continued to share those concerns. I, I still believe that the, that the building trails uh, much too much to the east. Um, and we keep talking about this idea of rather than pushing further east, pushing further south with the massing so that it's following the contours rather than cutting perpendicular to the contours. Um, the other thing that I noticed uh, that I haven't really given voice to yet is if we look at the east elevation for a moment, um, Holly, I think it's maybe the other direction. Oh, no, there we are. There we are. How architectural and formal, like the whole landscape terracing fencing thing is, this plinth of stone and then these uh, these walls that are you know, attempting to deal with the immense amount of grade change that happens as we go from west to east here. Um, so I'm in accord with basically everything that, that the other board members have said. So that's what I have to say. Oh, uh, along, the, uh, along the lines of this formality thing, compare the existing east elevation which is sort of allowing the grade to sort of naturally flow with the, you know, the, the retainage that's shown on the proposed and how that's sort of, you know, like creating this very formal uh, uh, assemblage on what is supposed to be a, you know, really casual back alley in Nantucket. So that I'm, I'm really reacting negatively to. So I would like to have a motion from somebody on this particular application and I have a few things to say. I think that we should get the landscape to track because obviously the, the revisions that we're requesting will affect the landscape and we're sort of running out of time. You know, it's quarter of nine. Um, can I have a motion? Uh, motion to- Motion <laughs> to hold for revisions. Okay. Excuse me. How do we put a time limit on it? So if they don't come up with it this time, it's three years. How long do we listen to this and uh, not be able to deny it for the length of time okay. that it's been in front of us? Listen, uh, I don't we could, you know, theoretically, we could deny this now, but it is a you know, quote, new application. Oh, 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 very important. One thing that I want in the motion is to incorporate the entire record of the past hearings into the current hearing so that it's all together, so that we don't have to keep, uh, you know, revisiting the same material, that it's all part of the record. So I'm sorry, Diane, if you could, um, continue, continue with your motion uh, and, and add that, that language to it, if you could. Okay. We, would, uh, we would ask for a uh, poll for revisions and the incorporation of all three years of, of statements 
and and submissions for the last three years for this application. So it comes as one package without having to call up anything else. Perfect. Is that what you want? Uh, okay. Just my, my last question, right? Uh, very no. quickly, we're in the middle of a motion right now. What's so the, this is not a new application? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. It, 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 okay. It is. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, that's the motion, friends. Uh, on Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Thank you, and, and I'm in favor. Thank you very okay, much, guys. Carries. Now, listen, I'd really like to have the landscape track uh, the, the architecture so that we're not sort of reviewing stuff that's going to inevitably change. Um, could I have that motion from one of the board members? I make that motion. Thank you. So the motion Diane's made is to have the landscape package tracked with the uh, architecture. On that motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Gary. Track, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Aye. You now I'm in favor, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So, so that means you're not listening, you're not opening the landscape in this evening, right? We're, we're having a track, Chris. Okay, so that means you're not opening it this evening. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you all, thank you all very much. Bye. Thanks, guys. Okay, let's see what we can do uh, in the remaining few minutes. We have uh, 119 Eel Point Road. Brooke, are you on? Yes, sir. Okay, hit it. Uh, this is uh, a one-story structure at uh, 119 Eel Point Road uh, that is uh, being proposed to um, demo or move off. Uh, we actually are planning on a move off, but we'd like to uh, have the demo option uh, included as part of this approval. How old is uh, it? 1960s. Uh, yes, I, actually, I think it's 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 had a lot of work done to it. Uh, I think um, uh, Sandcastle did some uh, oh, significant okay. additions, um, probably about yeah, right, 10, 15 years ago, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I remember this. Um, folks, what do you think? I would motion to approve a move off demo. Yeah, it's one of these cases where it's a perfectly acceptable building. It's just, you know, um, they'd, somebody out in Eel Point would really need to have a lot to be able to move it on. Not sure you could move it that far. Um, anyway, so there's a motion on the table. On that motion, um, Carrie? Hi. Thank you, um, Abby. Sorry, what, did we get a date on that? Did the, uh, Mr. Well, Chair? Oh, I'm sorry, Holly, go ahead. That, that's okay. Looking at the NHL data, uh, 119 is from 1979. Oh, so not the 60s. And, and I, I will attest to the fact that like since then, a lot of work has been done to this building. So it's not like it's a, you know a, an intact, um, building from 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 yeah. any particular the, those three gables were um yeah part of that uh part of the plans that you're looking at and that was from uh uh, uh 2000 right okay so the motion is to approve a demo move off um that was uh you ended on me and i asked a question i i'm going to say i okay uh diane i okay uh, sorry, Val, did you make that motion? I honestly- I did, yeah. Okay, so are you in favor of your motion? I am. Okay, and uh, Ray Paul is in favor of the motion too. So the motion carries. That's that, let's see. Um, 12 Hydrangea, new dwelling. All right. Um... Would you like me to present? I guess so. Okay, sir. Is that what you do? That is what I'm going to try. Uh, uh, so this building is at the end of uh, Hydrangea Lane, and it's on the left. Um, the uh, 
building is similar to what is there uh, as it addresses the street. You can see that the, um, mm. you know, that that's 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 the end of Hydrangea Lane. It's obviously not flat like that, uh, um, but you can see that on the site plan. Okay. And uh, I've you know basically presenting a similar architectural style as to its neighbors. Yeah, I mean you've done almost all the buildings out there. Uh, this this will be six or seven in this subdivision. Val has done at least one or two, right? I think she's done two. Yeah. Actually, two or three now. Right. Um, okay. So here we go, folks. Uh, Chair, yes. I do have Sconset advisory comments, very simple. Mm -hmm. On the south elevation, there was a request to separate the ganged windows. Right here. Okay. Other than that, that's it. Wow, all right. Uh, so let's see, have, have we seen all the elevations? No, we need two more, right? And Brooke? Yes, sir. Uh, if Holly, if we just scroll back up for a second, this this elevation, the east elevation with this blank first mm -hmm. floor, tell tell me about that. All right, so this um, this is right up against the uh, neighboring building. I mean, it's 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 the immediate butter to um, twelve hydrangea. Um, not that you'll ever see that wall right. unless you walk between the buildings. Okay. Uh, it's they're, they're trying to get a little bit of privacy there too, because um, I think there is a uh, a dining room window um, right across, and that is their living room. Okay, fair enough. All right, folks. Anyone? Well, I'll I... start if you. Oh, thank you, Diane. Go ahead. I think the, the thing that strikes me with all the the hydrangea lane cul-de-sac there is they they all go from 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 lot line to lot line and i don't know maybe we're looking at houses too big for the area the house is is fine i have no problem with the house i understand the windows up and top because the garage is on the other side of that isn't it uh, brooke uh, there is a shed in the back. There, there is no yep. garage. Oh, it must be the shed that I saw then. Uh, I just, I don't want to go up any taller because that would be outside. I just, sometimes if you could just take a foot or so off the side, it would give you a little room because there's surely very close to five feet from the thing. So that's 10 feet between houses. And it just seems like a terrible small amount of space to have these houses of this size. That's all out in Sconset. That's all. Otherwise the house to me is okay. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Val? Uh, so uh, to just to speak to that, um, a couple of those things. One is the height can't go any higher because they have restrictions, number one. Yeah. Number right. two, uh, by virtue of the size and shape of the lots is what really drives what these structures look like. And so I would say, uh, given the context and how much of a build out there already is, um, that, this is what there is, this is what they will be. So I don't have a problem with it because it is fitting in with everything else that's there. Thank you, Val. Abby. Yeah, I think if we were going to, sorry, am I muted? Nope, you're good. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, I, I think if we were going to talk about lot line to lot line, it would have been 13 houses ago. Um, hmm. And maybe we should have done it then, but it's a little late to bring it up now. So I'm okay with it. You're okay with it. Okay, uh, Carrie? Just wondering on the 
north elevation, I think it is. Can you scroll down to the next sheet? Yep. No, it's the west. Oh, west. Those are all glass doors, Brooke? Uh, yes. They just seem a little out of proportion to me, but maybe um, that's not visible from anywhere. Is that right? Um, there is uh, the Sconset Trust land immediately to the west. Um, and otherwise, uh, it's tucked around the side of the, um, the, the kitchen mass. Um, which is forward, uh, forward in that elevation. Right. Um, so I, I would say that from Milestone Road, you'd have to be looking out at, at it on a Jan, looking for it on a January day mm -hmm. with all the vegetation gone. Yeah. No, I think it's a cute house. That's the, my only concern was just the right. proportion of those doors to the rest of it. But good. All right. I'm okay with it. Oh, actually, why don't we, for, for the sake of, uh, if we go back to Sconset Advisory, they were suggesting uh, unpairing that, uh, that pair of windows on the south elevation, I believe, correct? Correct. Which, inter interestingly, they're sort of off-center anyway. Um, can, you, can you split those up, Brooke? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I can definitely either split split them up or maybe go single. I, I, I don't want to be forced one way or the other. I'd like to let my client choose. Um, but uh, I think that we could unmull them. Well, let's let's see what uh, if someone can give me a motion that we can work with. Make a motion to submit as as submitted through staff splitting the mold windows on the south elevation left-hand side or a single win window, whichever fits oh. in best. Okay, let's try that motion. Thank you for the motion, Diane. Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Great, Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, that's that. Now we have a shed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, as simple as can be. Yep. Simple oh. utilitarian structure. Uh, Holly, any sconset advisory on this guy? No concerns. No concerns. Okay. Somebody? Motion to approve is submitted. Okay, on the motion, Diane. Aye. Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. I'm in favor. All right, hardscape. Is this our last one or are we gonna try to? Well, I'd really, I don't know what the last one is, it's 12 Lincoln, but I'd love to get through the leftover business before onto our actual agenda okay um, before we adjourn if that's possible um oh we still have four minutes left so what do we need to know about the hardscape brooke uh it's it's bluestone as um shown on the site plan they do oh, want a, a little oh. corner well uh holly if you back up a sec yeah. in the back corner there all right, with a little, that's a fire pit? Yeah, it's a gas fire pit. Um, so there is a, a low retaining wall that we're also proposing. Uh, the, the, um, the grade actually comes up behind that lot. It's, it's slightly mounted. It's maybe like a two to four foot uh, sloping rise going from west to east. And so this retaining wall um, with the, uh, will be kind of almost sunken into the grade at that point. Uh, it'll be a little bit exposed on the west, but again, you know, it's only going to be two feet high. Um, but Brooke? Yes, sir. The retainage is facing into your property, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the grade all around it is higher. Uh, yes, definitely like on that back property line going west to east, it is higher. On the west run, that little, I guess, 
15 foot section. Um, it's, you know, it probably is at a, uh, like a, a one and a half foot and then it slopes down to zero. So you'll mm -hmm. catch the corner uh, right. at that, uh, at that south, southern point of the retaining wall. Um, but that's, you know, again, it's, it's all grass. There's uh, just tons of, tons of field there. Um, okay. So Fair enough. I don't know that it'll be visible, Board. but I don't want to misrepresent how, how, uh, what the uh, exposure is. Thank you. And it's not that a, fire I'll pit. <laughs> okay. Brooke. Yes, sir. Brian wants to say something. Yep. No, I was just wondering why on that short uh, west thing, you can't just berm it down since it's all grass rather than having a stone wall there. They would like a place it's to sit. Two. Then it isn't just for retention of the land. It's Well, certainly in the back it is, but on the side, yeah, it's, it's definitely more uh, for, you know, having a place to sit. Mr. Again, Chair. I, I would argue oh. visibility in that right. case. Okay. Um, yes, Holly. Gonset had no uh, comments on this either. No Thank concerns. You. Okay. Um, Diane, anything else? No, I just wanted to uh, try to keep the amount of stone walls in that particular area, which is next to the golf course mm. and runs out to Skinner's and there's an old farm to keep the stone walls down to a minimum. And if we could, we could roll the, the, the vegetation and stuff, it would be good. That's all. Thank you, Diane. Um, Abby. I'm fine with it. Okay, Val. I'm fine with it as well. Okay, Carrie. Me too. Sounds like we might have lift off. Somebody give me a motion. Motion to approve is submitted. Okay. Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. Um, Val. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, great. That's the end of Brooke and do we have somebody here to represent um, this 12 Lincoln Ave hardscape yep. revisions? Hi. And folks, this, for everyone, for everyone listening, this will be our last uh, review for the night. We're all gonna go home. Um, so I, I think we have a meeting wow. scheduled for one o'clock on Thursday, correct, Kathy? Yes. Okay. All right, so, 12 Lincoln, and we have somebody to represent, right? Yes, this is Eric Cabusa from Matthew Cunningham Landscape Design. Okay, thank you. And we're presenting some landscape revisions, right. primarily the reduction in the driveway size from approximately 2,900 square feet to about 2,100 square feet. We reduced the size of the arrival court and now created a ribbon driveway. And primarily the client was looking to reduce the paved surfaces in the front yard. Mm -hmm. The other part of this revision for the driveway is that we're looking to move all to all cobble. Originally it was a combination of pea stone and cobble and the client is interested in having the cobble um, continue throughout the driveway and parking courts. Additionally, we've had some Oh, did you have a question? Yeah. So just, just to be clear. So sure. everything that we're looking at for the drive is all cobble now as proposed? Yes. Okay, good. And, and do we also have something, a frame of reference? You say that it's been reduced in size. Do we have something the, the previously approved? Yes, that, that was also part of the application. It should be a few sheets down. Okay. The yeah. um, rev cloud that's there also indicates the prior size. So that might be helpful too. Oh, you mean the bubbling is basically outlining where it used to be? Exactly. Okay, good to know. And you were about to say something, I believe about that path on the um, other side of the house, right? Yes, there were a couple of keystone paths originally proposed 
and the client has requested that we go to just solid cut granite. So I see. Mm -hmm. on the north side of the main house, it would be a continuous path. And then also, ex yep, exactly over by the guest house, we'd have solid granite. And then the really tertiary path over on the north side, that would become stone steppers just to break up the mass of that. Going out to Gapom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Lastly, we just have two areas where we're looking to put in some additional stone pads. And that use is essentially, we're hoping to have some planters in those areas. And we just didn't have any other location at the mudroom because the step is so <laughs> tight there. So we are just proposing to have two stone pads to support planters for annual planting. Thank you. Um, board members. Your chair. Oh, um, sorry, sorry. We do have um, HSAB as well as I believe there was a mail that came in as well from an abutter. Okay. I don't know if Kathy, if you can look that up for me while I'm reading HSABs, that would be great because mm -hmm. I don't have it readily available. Um, their comments. So the stone path is okay, but the driveway arrival court is too big. Looks like a parking lot with too much paving. Lots of um, development on this lot. Cars parking in front is not appropriate. Stones look too formal for Palm Road. Um, oh, there was. Problems. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, the screen parking on the north. Oh, they would like to screen the parking on the north and the east uh, with the proposal over here. They're talking about screening this. Um, paths are too formal, parking too large and formal, shift from the street. Those are their overall comments. I will note that I understand that this is a revision to the previous uh, parking and hardscape layout, but I do believe HSAB did not have the, um, they weren't privy to that. Um, review process at that point. So yeah. those are the comments. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right, board members. This is it. Last one of the evening. <laughs> I'll go. All right. Thank you, Diane. I think that the all the stone walk, I think making everything cobblestone is is much too heavy for this area Lincoln Ave. And the space that they have for the two cars, you can get five cars parked in there. And they got one, two, three, four. The garage is five. It's it's a busy lot, busy, busy. So I would like to see it be what it was. If they want to do cobbles with grass in between the way they have the beginning and the and the middle, that's fine. But the but the actual spaces should be made smaller. And the straight paths with with the I don't know whether these are actually even Stephen tiles that go along, but they shouldn't be. They should be uh, rough edged. And I can't get over to the edge of it right now, but it's it's such a formal landscape that. And the, uh, I would like to see that formality made softer. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Abby. Yeah, I know. I, uh, the, um, I'm a little bit frightened by this landscape. I, uh, I, I mean, uh, so let me just make sure I've got this right. Where the two cars are, that's the front of the house. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I, I can't, I mean, I, so, you know, Lincoln Circle, it's got, it's a circle with split rail fence with grass in the middle that's not so great in shape. It's, there's nothing naturalistic about this. Uh, I think we need a new approach. I think Diane's right, over cobblestone, too much parking. Uh, most of the houses on Lincoln Circle sort of have a, uh, you know, sort of a, a very understated front to them. And I, I, I think this is over-designed and over-manipulated and 
too much hardscaping. So I, um, I'd like to see revisions. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Let's see, um, Val. Well, uh, I think we are only commenting on what's circled because it seems as though the rest of it has already been approved. Um, and turning the areas in question here into stone as opposed to pea stone, which was a little bit more informal, I think I would go back to what was previously there with the exception of the size of the parking court. I do appreciate that you are reducing that. Um, would there be a consideration for perhaps having, you know, the parking all in one area, like on the side of the building and leaving the front facing the mm -hmm. circle uninhibited? I mean, as it is, we took down a tree and I don't understand all that mm, cut stone that staggered in the front, but um, I know that's not before us at the moment. So I, I do agree with my cohorts here. I think it's, it's too much on a site that has too much, but um, we're only able to talk about what's in the red. So that's all I'm gonna make comment on. Thank you, Val. How about you, Carrie? I tend to agree with the others on the driveway. I think the rest of it is very paved and hardscaped and to not have this be cobble gives a, a little bit of that informality that's up there already. I would say stick with the piece down and keep it as small as possible. Yeah, well, were you finished, Carrie? Yeah. Yeah, because I, basically I feel the same way. I, I actually don't recall sitting on the application that approved this hardscape to begin with. That's funny, I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't either. Like this, this idea of having like this parking court like right in the front yard is kind of scary. Can we check and see if we actually did that, well, Mr. I'm Chair? Sure Look, I'm sure that we did, um, but uh, assuming that, oh. I would say that um, my comments are essentially in line with everyone else, which is to the degree that we can reduce the formality and get it back to something that um, is more appropriate to the circle, which is, uh, you know, despite the fact that there are large houses there, there are large houses with very informal landscapes around them. So, uh, the revisions that have been discussed, I'm in favor of. Um, this is gonna be a party house. May I comment? I received some information from the architect. That uh, might be helpful. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, the architect said that he believes that five parking spaces are required as part of our second dwelling approval. I don't have any personal uh, knowledge of that, but that seems to be something that is part of the second dwelling approval. Oh, well, but that doesn't mean you can't reduce it. You have one in the garage, you could have two in front of the garage and two stacked where the, you know, former P-Stone driveway was. So it doesn't have to be the parking court. Okay. Well, anyway, look, the, the point is, uh, yeah. I'm sure that there was an approval, you know, an HCC approval for this parking court at the front. So what I'm talking about is triage measures that, that we can use um, that will get this to be less formal and feel. Um, that's, that's all I was saying. So I think that we'll- Can I say something? Yeah, yeah sure, Diane. I think I would like to see the application and, the, and that it's signed off and think because I, I am shocked that they cut that tree down, and you know, you know that if they had asked to cut the tree down, I would have had a lot to say about it. And that's a tree in the front, right there on Lincoln Circle. So let's just check and make sure it went through yeah. an application and and wasn't done on consent or something. Right. Um, 
What are we looking at there? I believe this is the application that approved the hardscaping. One of them, because this looks like it's revision. Why is it? Why is only Diane's name on it? It. This was simply a change of material from crushed cell to P stone. So, so the bigger this, one. This is. There's another one that. Right. This. Yeah. Revisions to that certificate is what we're looking for. Or the, the, yeah, the, I think that's the one we want to see. But, but listen, folks, we should probably just get a uh, motion for some revisions on this. Okay. Absolutely. So right. so moved. All right, thanks, Abby. Um, on that motion, Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. I'm in favor. Okay, so revisions and everything else, in other words, all of the old business will move to Thursday, right, Kathy, or it already has been? Yes. So do we do we need to move that or do we just no? But Mr. Chair, you do have two applications that they didn't show up for representation. <clears throat> um, if you want me to keep them at the beginning, if not, I can pull, move them to the end. <laughs> My I vote think is they to should move, move to the end. To the end, you know, you yeah. snooze, you yeah. lose. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to the end. Um, <clears throat> oh, wait. So you said that needs to be moved. Right. Yeah. So 26 New Street and 78 Milk Street um, will help representation. But we need to move that they go to the end of Thursday's agenda. Yeah. yeah. OK. Can somebody no make move? Thank you, uh, Diane. On that motion. Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Gary. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. OK. Very good. So folks, um, let's see. Kathy, is there anything that we need to be doing that's time sensitive on, on our other business before we adjourn? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, that's good news. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, no, another long night. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, but uh, I think we could have somebody move. For Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Val. That's a great motion. On that motion, Diane. Aye. Abby. Aye. Gary. Aye. And Val. Definitely aye. Yeah. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Someday I'm going to someday I'm going to uh, uh, be opposed to the motion. That's not. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you all. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night, Carrie. Oh, my God.